You wanted a blockbuster match? Time to break out the fancy cookware. And NYXL coming out on top in a lot of these engagements. Alpine's starting to feel Ooh. it. <laughs> this might be the go signal for Seoul Dynasty now. No resurrection, no second chances. This is some close quarter stuff. Toby's waiting in line to show the world what he's made of. And the Seas have done the job. That's a pure 1v1. And they bring it home in style. Let's go, baby. It's Friday night. Welcome back to the Blizzard Arena. How's everybody doing out there? Yes! It has been a ridiculous week, and it only gets better from here. Welcome back to the Overwatch League. We are in week three of the regular season, and once again, I'm your host at the desk, Chris Puckett, and I'm joined by some of the biggest minds in all of Overwatch Esports. We got Sideshow, the former tank, now professional tank breaker downer. It's reinforced <laughs> in the center, and so our insider is back in action. And already, we have seen some ridiculous matches here in week three. Yeah, we absolutely have. We saw the Battle of Los Angeles play out as well, with Valiant being able to take the win in a reverse sweep. That was an absolutely nuts game. So it, I guess that makes Valiant the home team now. They, they won? I think they got it for right now, Johnny, <laughs> but the upsets kept coming yesterday. They certainly did. We saw Boston beating the London Spitfire, and then, of course, we saw that Philadelphia Fusion took down the New York Excelsior, which was a bit shocking, even we were wrong, the analyst here. I mean, no one's <laughs> perfect, okay? So it was very shocking indeed, but let's see if they can keep up the momentum. Yeah, but you know what? That means that the Seoul Dynasty is now the only team which is still undefeated, and who knows? Maybe that's going to change today. No claps, no claps in here, no applause. No one loves Seoul as much as we do at the desk. Well, here's why we love Seoul. They're the only unbeaten team, as Zoe just mentioned, and they currently hold the number one seed. Spitfire right behind them with a 5-1 record, and New York Excel comes in at 4-1. There's a big chunk of teams right in the middle of the pack, though, as everyone is trying to finish in the final three. But today, it's all about the top dogs. And as we get into this schedule, you can see it's going down right now. Seoul Dynasty versus the New York Excel. Later, we see the Philadelphia Fusion coming off that hot win. They take on the Shanghai Dragons, and we close it out with Dallas. Will they get their first win of the regular season as they take on the San Francisco Shock? Are you guys ready to start this party? I'm gonna need a little bit more than that as we welcome our first team to the stage. Give it up for the Seoul Dynasty. Kuki leading the charge today as this squad comes in with the 5-0 record. They've taken down Dallas, they beat the Gladiators, they dismantled Florida and set aside Boston and Shanghai. And the whole time, they've only dropped two maps along the way. But today, they face their toughest challenger yet. Yeah, and you know, I think if this team will be challenged, they hopefully get a bit of more uh, strategic subbing strats coming our ways, because so far it's just gonna look like they're trying out different things, and it looks like they approach their opponents with plastic cutlery. They've been playing with their food. NYXL won't let them get away with this, so today we're gonna see proper dinner etiquette from those. We got steak <laughs> knives in the building. Absolutely. <laughs> but even with all this experimentation, we have seen little flavors of the different looks that this Soul Dynasty can offer. You know, they have the choice between between their two main tanks, Miro and Cookie, and that provides a hyper aggressive Miro on the Winston or a more stable position with Cookie. And so, looking at this roster, it gives us a decent idea of what they're going to bring to this map. Yes, and I think this thing is probably their best roster they have to offer. This is the most versatile uh, lineup they have. Cookie is going to play the most passive main tank. Then we have Flatter, who is so versatile, he can play pretty much any role. Then we have Munchkin on the Tracer, he can play all of the hitscan heroes. So this is probably the core six out of Soul Dynasty, the one we will see into playoffs and more. It's good to see Zumba back in the starting lineup as well. That is a look at the Soul Dynasty. It's now time to introduce their challenger. Please welcome to the stage, the New York XL. expecting this squad to come into today's match at 5-0, but they slipped up last night going up against the Philadelphia Fusion. Reinforce, where did they go wrong? Well, they were a bit too passive. They favored Janus instead of Mono, and that gave too much room to Philadelphia Fusion with Shadowburn and Carpe leading the way. But this time, they're bringing out Mono. So despite the fact that they're often praised as one of the best slower teams in the league by the other teams, this time they seem to bring out the aggression with Mono leading the charge, and him and Saibiolbi is going to set up the aggression. 
And I have to say, it looked like a trap game for NYXL yesterday. They looked too far ahead and were not prepared against the Philadelphia Fusion, putting all their focus on their match against the Seoul Dynasty. And Fusion was kind of their must-win opponent this week. With good preparation, they could have walked away this week with a 1-1 or even a 2-0 score. And now, instead, they're running the risk of actually finishing 0-2. Yeah, that is the case, but rather than focusing on the slip on the hack yesterday, I want to highlight how good this team actually is. They come in and they look to the eye test to be potentially the second best team in the league behind Seoul. And they've got a decent chance of the upset here. The question in my mind is, they've got a player on the bench called Pine and he is still unbeaten. He has not lost a map so far. They've, they've subbed him in mostly for the control points. They didn't put him in for that decider map yesterday. Will we see him today? Is Pine going to stay unbeaten? I hope we see a game five. We'll just start there. And as we take a look at both starting lineups, let's talk about how they compare and what's really on the line for these squads today. On paper, this is a massive matchup. It's your number one seed, the Seoul Dynasty, going up against the number three seed in New York XL. So guys, how important is this matchup? I know it's still kind of early in stage one. Well, with London slipping a little bit uh, yesterday as well, I think that this could be the most important game in stage one. This is your undefeated team taking on their biggest challenger out of all of the rest of the teams in the league. This is going to decide seedings coming into the stage one playoffs. Who gets that buy straight to the finals for that, uh, for the top spot? Who gets the bragging rights of saying that they are the best team in the Overwatch League at the moment? There's money on the line, there's bragging rights, there's pride. This team, uh, rather this game is going to be phenomenal. Zoe, how are the teams feeling right now? Yeah, I actually talked to the coach from the Seoul Dynasty. He did tell me that NYXL is one of their old rivals and they consider this match to be the most important match for them in stage number one as they feel like if they manage to win this one they can ride this momentum and that will make them the top contender for that number one slot so it's really important for them to win it yeah mr x one of our casters sent around his predictions earlier in a group chat he had Seoul finishing at 10 and 0 i know a lot of new york fans are hoping to uh, prove matt wrong here today let's talk about one of the issues we saw from new york though yesterday and that was dealing with the genji and the far from shadowburn today you maybe get an upgrade in Fleta here from the Seoul Dynasty, who runs both those heroes incredibly well. So Reinforce, should New York be worried? They should be very worried. I would say Fleta, given his current form anyway, is probably the best performing player in the league. Is he the best player in the world? It's a bit too early to say, but with his current form, this guy is insane. He can play the Junkrat, he can play the Genji, Farah, Widowmaker, Tracer. He's showed so many heroes. And I mean, it doesn't get any easier for New York here. But this time, they're bringing Mono on the main tank. And they've recognized that they have to shut down Flera. So they're not going to, going to give him any kind of space. And maybe he won't get these highlights we see here. Yeah, you, you hear these teams talking about each other. And they kind of typify uh, New York XL as being the more passive playing team. But I think they've realized that that could be a problem for them. And they are going to have to play much more aggressive to shut down that guy right there. His Farah statistics are absolutely unbelievable. He has, a, you can see that he's second in the league for eliminations for 10 minutes of direct hits. Now the guys that are above him have played five to 10 times less Farah than Fletter has. So this is just kind of like, in, not inaccuracies, but uh, extrapolation, right, of the data. Whereas Fletter has shown utter consistency the whole time on so many heroes, including the Farah, they have to shut him down. Keep your eyes on Flutter if you're a Seoul Dynasty fan. If you're cheering on New York today, there is one man I want you to watch, and that is Sabi Obi. We'll see if he can get the job done, because it's time to kick off this match. Are you guys ready? The fans are ready, so are our casters. Let's send it on over to Semar and Hex. Thank you so much, Bucket. And this is it, Hex. I, it's one of those pinch me moments. Are we actually going to get to cast this game? Because I think this is going to be one of the big barn burners of the whole season here. I think this is the match that everyone's been looking forward to. If you skip ahead a couple weeks and you look at your calendar, it's like, oh no. Yeah, New buddy. It's all going to be sick. We're definitely looking forward to this. And you just, as plain as it is, whoever wins this is the best team in the Overwatch League right now because they've won the head to head. They'll be in the top three anyway after the split. So this is the most important match thus far of the Overwatch League. We're going to kick it off in. Eichenwald. No, 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 go ahead and do your Zoe impression. Uh, no, I can't, I can't. I mean... Look, Zoe and I are friends, and I think to keep it that way. Uh, Oak Forest, also interpreted as Celebration Forest. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking up what words mean here, but this is an interesting map because we saw how good Flutter is on the Farah. He's unlocked something, and maybe it's a, it's a bonus. You get heat-seeking missiles. Man, does not miss. He doesn't. You got to see a few of those in the replay there as well, highlighting some of his bigger moments on the Farah. But I feel like Sideshow is really trying to eliminate that. The fact that he has played Farah so much more, 
and yet he is still second in accuracy. That's unbelievable, right? That is just so consistent. It's just the direct air shots too. I mean, he puts the fear. What? How do you really deal with him? You gotta hope that one of your standout hit scans goes nuts and run some widow. Maybe Pine gets into the mix. We get to see the epic McCree versus Farah battle, but. I don't know, he's, he's unstoppable, he's definitely the front runner for MVP. What do you make of uh, New York not running Pine here to start things off? I mean, we didn't get to see him yesterday either. Pine's been on hiatus, this is weird. You know, you hope that you win it and then you bust out your secret weapon, or if you need a little momentum boost, you bring out Pine. Pine's is like an intimidating factor. He should have stage entrance music and like, yeah. oh my God, that's Pine's music, here he comes. But I think early on they want to run with like their core roster, how it is, and see where it goes. Look, they have pretty good players on this team without I Pine. Liberal and save you'll be two of the best DPS in all of Overwatch. Now, save you'll be in particular has definitely impressed and curious to see. I mean, he's going to stick on the McCree here to start. You, you were mentioning that, right? Hit scan players that need to step up and shut down this fair that's going to be floating around in the air. New York, granted, they don't quite know what Solar going to be throwing at him yet, though. So how do you make the defense so far, given what we see here for the offense? It's interesting. They're going for a pick composition, which means they're going to try to get one player out of the fight and win it right there. What you do is you've got the Orisa here. That's Mono. He's going to throw out a halt, which locks them in place, and then you're going to hook follow up the halt and hook with a Mono and Mecco right there. Then it's just overall, it's a pretty good McCree map. You have a lot of space to work. Fleta's gonna look at this angle right here, maybe go over top, not quite the full flank, but he's gonna take a strange angle knowing that the static defense is set up right outside the door. Yeah, with that tree in the way, it does make it kind of difficult to get eyes on him as well. And this is clever positioning. He knows where you are, and he's just gonna chuck rockets into the middle of it, completely ignoring the air battle as well for now, wanting to do as much damage as possible to the ground. And already, Sabiobi is gone, but that's Jaehong picking up the first kill. Well, Jaehong is a DPS oh. well in there, but Liberal will take down Fleta. That is an enormous kill that should prompt Toby to try to get over over there and take him back to life. But they bait in the Mercy. Libero takes down Toby. That was the longest kill ever, but he finally got rewarded. Patience, you know, is key in this sort of fight for Samba. And he's looking for the follow-up as well. Libero is barely making it back around the corner in time. Now they've lost a little bit too much here. Zuma's back here. Out in no man's land, he's gonna try to sneak around. That is a heavy-footed mech, though. I'm surprised they don't know where he is. And they do know where he is. Zumba going to go for the rooftops. He was just waiting for cooldown so he could boost back to his team. Nice for guys to stay in alive. That's gonna get to some of that old percentage going for his healers as well on Ark and Jonak. Jonak nearly has a transcendence. But then Jaehong as well. Well, sorry. Jaehong and Toby for Soul Dynasty. But Jaehong getting real close to the trance himself. Well, both tanks are going in, not quite a full dive, playing a little bit passively, just putting some pressure up front, opening some space so that Munchkin can get to the back line. He's gonna look to stick someone to this false bomb. He's got a Zen 1v1, but Discord, he backs out. Now, Trance already popped here by Jaehong, trying to keep his teammates alive. They are getting into the Hunter's Lodge. So this will give him some angles you can see to try and work with here. There it is, Munchkin sees the opening, will connect with the Pulse. Not quite going to pick up the kill, however, they stand tall here, New York Excel, and they are hanging in there for the defense. You see Fleta in the kill feed and no one getting credit for the kill. That generally means one of the tanks jumped into his face and either got a, a, the body blocking, so the rockets do splash damage onto the Pharah who's using them, or dropping one of the Winston shields, and that splash damage will kill him as well. So far, Libero has been up to the task of dealing with Fleta in the sky. He's putting a lot of pressure on there, was able to use his own barrage to take out the opponent, Mercy. Both teams are nearing their ultimates, which are of the gravest importance, and that is Valkyrie coming up. It will allow them to spread, heal, and resurrect people. Ark and uh, Toby both have Valkyrie available. This is the weirdest flank ever. It's not every day that you see a Zenyatta all the way in the back line. Jayhawk really wondering how he's going to get back here to support his teammates. Skooky's already batting him around like a chew toy. Well, there it is, the reds at the top. Kuki is not letting them hide away. He's knocking them through the doors into the firing squad that is his team right there. Very well played. They are making a little bit of progress. Toby has popped Valkyrie, as has Ark, so some of these deaths are going to be resurrected. But we are making progress on the point now. Two ticks already here for Soul Dynasty. You're getting the impression that they're able to hold New York, but they give up too much ground in the end. They are not able to, able to withstand the attack, and we will get that first point capped for Soul, and so now it's about pushing the payload to the remaining two points here. You will see some hero switches definitely on the both sides very likely, but for now, New York is going to stand pat. Fleta going over to his Widowmaker. Fleta, yeah. not long on that Widow. I love it. The halt hook combo, you see it all the time, or you're seeing it more and more these days. That's the communication that you need, the coordination between both of those tanks, and a supercharger's been used already here. Perhaps jumping the gun just a little bit, but New York really wanting to halt that payload at the arch with this defense. Yeah, a little strange because you think that after that first pick onto the Widowmaker that the other team's just going to reset and wait a second, so dropping that supercharger 
questionable to say the least. Maybe Mono has designs on switching after this, and they wanted to make sure to get some value out of the supercharger as well. Flutta still looking for angles, goes for the grapple shot, doesn't find anything just yet. Uh, this is how you want to deal with the Widow, though. Do not give any free shots, although as I say that, Libro caught out in the open, and there we go, Flutta connects with two. Can start laying down the pressure on this long line of sight, past the, well, past the payload arc, I thought for a second, but there it is! The headshot on Saviolvi. Fleta now reigns supreme. He'll get the high ground as well. Really setting it up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You think he's going to get it. I mean, that Mercy's not out of trouble just yet. Still trying to fly back. We'll have to go all the way back. And now this is an angle that's going to be very difficult for the New York Excelsior to break. They're going to have to send tanks out here first. And meanwhile, they're giving up so much push. They're actually taking a back stairs angle too. I believe that is a little flank. Probably save Yogi back there. Hmm. Kind of curious to see if he decides to take position on the balcony up there above the bridge. You saw how effective that can be with the Widow as soon as your teammates are there. And sure York. enough, he's worked his way back around. And there's the follow-up shot, but he gets dove immediately by D.Va. This is him at risk. Flatter might get overwhelmed. Picks up the health pack, but it's not going to be enough. And he will get hunted down in the end. One of the issues with that is you have to send so many resources up there to go deal with it. So when the Divas out of the mix for the rest of the fight, it should make the ground war much easier for the Soul Dynasty as they continue. It's been very back and forth. One of the Valkyries out, both of Valkyries out, so these kills not necessarily permanent. Oh, that was such a sick attempt there from Munchkin. He gets robbed though, his pulse bomb not gonna get anything done, and it's the hard reset. Don't worry. Just chuck this stuff out. You can't add, there's no hidden platforms down there that he was trying to make a play for. No, no, no. He was just trying to die so he could respawn with the Stevens. No, just murky water, death, and probably alligators. Sure. Alli all, always alligators in a moat, Hex. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna have a moat. They almost come in, but you know, written in with the lease, right? When you buy your <laughs> castle. It's just how many alligators? No, 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 no. We need 10 alligators, 7 alligators. Definitely not gonna cut it. New life goal, lease and alligator. Or bears. Bears that are supposed to be pretty sick too. All right, we've already got action here. Jayhawk will get caught. There it is, the flank. Kooky, though, will be able to return the favor. Both of the Zenyatas out of the fight, and Fleta still looking for his shots. He does get a shot reflected back at him, though. And again, they've been very effective about keeping the pressure up on Fleta here in New York Excel. Yeah, Primal Rage comes out a little bit late. Generally, when you lose both healers in a fight, you're just going to try to pull back into this. And Soul continue to push. Maybe they wanted a little survivability on Kooky, so they have to wait for a full reset. But it's not just the amount of players you die, it's what roles are dying. If you lose two of anything, you're not in a great situation. And losing both your supports generally signals the end to an early fight. We're running out of time here, though, Hex. We're about to cross the 10 second mark, and Soul, they need to get up there to tap the payload, but they're getting the fight taken to them already. Primal Rage, that's perfect. It's gonna buy even more time. And Soul, it has to come down to Munchkin. Somebody has to get over onto that point. Sure enough, the entire time while this is going, Munchkin pushing the payload forward, keeping on top of it, continues to make progress. Where are his team though? They're all dead. It's going to require a miracle for Munchkin, and he will not find that. I think they knew he was doing progress on the cart, but they were fine. They wanted to finish the fight up front. That's a problem we can deal with. Even the best tracers in the world are not going to win that 5v1, and so far, a very solid defense for the New York XL. Soon, and I was just sitting there. I approve of this, Munchkin. See, soon ruin it for everyone. Now everyone's looking out for it. Yeah. Soon already got the back cap. Now everyone's just uh, someone's probably just the, the payload monitor, right? Like a hallway monitor. They always have one eye up, have to check it every couple of seconds. They knew it was happening, but they wanted to finish off everything, make sure that there was no chance that Tracer was going to get any help on the card. Uh, sick play by Libero there. Dragon Blade right in the hallways. That's exactly where you want to be. No escape, nowhere to go. And so we will be swapping sides now. It'll be Soul Dynasty flipping over onto the defense. And New York Excel on the offense. Libero pretty handily won the Farah fight, it seemed, at least on the first point. There wasn't a whole lot of Farah v. Farah, but he definitely had the barrages up, and he got a little bit more value out of his barrages, as we saw that Fleta actually ended up eliminating himself with a barrage. So Libero definitely up to the task here. Early on, also with the McCree, they're putting a little bit of pressure. It makes Fleta's job that much more difficult on the far. He's got to stay a little bit back, as you mentioned, hiding in the trees, mm -hmm. trying to get something going. So overall, the defense did a good job of shutting them down. And most importantly, the, the tanks were super aggressive on the supports. There's so many times where they were able to dive in the back, and those are world-class supports in Jaehong and Toby, and there were a couple fights where they died Attack very early. Incoming. Those are fights you can't win. If you're losing that support healing, I mean, the guy in the crowd with the sign, you know, you know, we will, no healers, we will all die. I mean, fair enough, man, but not in the competitive Overwatch scene. Maybe one healer, you know, you'll cut it down to one. We'll get out of solo mercy. But uh, that's the motto of quick play. That's like, it, exactly. No healers, we will all die. Yeah, and you know, if you could all pick Hanzo, I know, I know, if you could all pick Hanzo, <laughs> you would, but it's time. 
to get into the action. Countdown has begun, it has pretty much ended, and Soul Dynasty now will have to withstand the attack from the New York Excel. Save Yobi will be going for the Tracer, so we can expect some big plays from him. We've already seen some clutch pulse bombs, and Mono will be on the road. Yeah, that's, it's an interesting pick to the offense, but I think he's just very comfortable on it. Oddly enough, Mecco had played an amazing Roadhog the last time we saw New York Excelsior, so interesting switch ups, but that's the, the, the first kill you see. But already, SBB back onto Fleta, who falls first, and they clean up right after with Fleta out of the mix. There's no pressure on Libero. The skies are clear, but they are not friendly. Unbelievable how quick that was. The damage, and this is when you really see that offense working perfectly together, just moving in as that killer death ball, rolling everything in front of them. Soul just weren't able to withstand it. It's the opening pick from Sabiobi, one of the best tracers on the planet, if not the best tracer. His name's definitely in the hat. To take out the main threat to your other DPS, that's how you can work in concert without even being near each other. He calls that, he's down on McCree. Skies are open. No one's touching that Libero Farah, and he just crushes it. And now you've got the Genji here for Libero. Switches off the Farah, and so he'll be mobile. You can already see with the dash cutting off those sight lines. The Fleta has swapped over to the Widow. Now, I think they're, they're perfect reads on each other so far, both of these teams. It's a great switch against that Widow. There's no way in this open space you're going to be able to challenge a Widow on the high ground, especially a Widow of Fleta's caliber. So what Libero wants is he wants to sneak around the back, use this wall climbing ability and get up there. Woo! Little dicey. Uh, a bit, a bit, a bit, cutting it a bit fine there. Nearly went slip into a watery grave with alligators. Instead, he managed to make it out. But we will have the kill coming in here from Zuma to start things off. Jonak gets the snipe on Munchkin. No back flank this time around. And so New York Excel, still, the fight continues. Oh, most people brought back oh. to life. Another huge volley takes down Zumba. Jonak has been a monster on Zenyatta. Just doesn't stop. He almost plays it like a third DPS. He's just so consistent with finding those volleys and finding those orb shots. Save Yolvi, taking some shots real quick. And Toby, but Toby's gonna be able to back out of there. And Fleta now, well, they basically shut down the back line, so that should stop the push. Now it's about Sebiobi here. Can he find anything extra to get away with? Well, I think he wants to just get away. He also wants to keep eyes on where the Widow is. What he's doing right now is just knowing where that Widow is, so he's calling it for his team. And if he can get him out of the fight early, but a nice escape there by Fleta. If he can get the kill on Widow, that's good. That means they can push without that threat up there or maybe force out a resurrection. But even right then, he just wants to let his team know this is where she is. Be careful of this sight line. What do you make of the old game right now? I mean, it seems like, Jonak, we're gonna have a bit of an advantage here for New York Excel. Something they could try and be playing off of here. You can definitely push this. I'm actually most interested in the self-destruct. This is such a wide open area when the defense is on the bridge. There's no place to hide. They're just looking for it right now. I think they might take their cues from save Yobi yet again. That's how they won their first fight. And you can see him pushing the, play the payload forward a little bit. Causing Soul to have to react. And there's the self-destruct mainly. Will he be able to find a kill with it? Yes, he will. Or no, see, Yobi is the one to take down Fleta. And so once again, you're right. Key DPS frag right there to open things up. And that lets Libero go ham. Yeah, Mecco just wanted a new mech, actually. And now Libero goes to town. And that was a huge kill. And when you take a Widow out of the fight, everyone else can play a completely different style. Widow changes the battlefield. Mano living up to his name. Yeah, that, that touch combo right there. Libero, Mano, ganging up. Mano batting him into the wall. Libero with the dash. So much damage. And now, well, it's the Hail Mary coming in here from Soul Dynasty. Zumba just goes charging in, but he's not going to be long for this world. The self-destruct will not catch anybody out in the open. Exactly as expected. Fleta still somehow takes down Sibyobi. And so now, one of the key players here for XL is out of the fight. And this is the big opportunity here for Soul. Perhaps they can turn this around. The Transcendence keeping the teammates alive here. They're going all in on this turnaround as well. They lost a couple. It might have been time to disengage, but Ark will pop his Valkyrie. Big people back to life. Save Yobi hits the pulse bomb onto Jayong, but I don't think it's going to be enough. That is a lot of defense on the guard. The blade, more ambition. Oh my god, two! Two Libero, he's chopping up the paces! Three kills, straight it up. He's just turned it around single-handedly here for his team. It's down to the tanks now for Soul Dynasty to try and survive as best they can. And they're already having to give ground here, having to dance as best. Well, it's not going to be good enough. New York XL, off the back of some crazy plays from Libero, managed to pick up the first map. The sheer guts and confidence they had. That's a fight I would have quit three times in a row, but these are your professionals. We lost two, no problem. I'll bring them back to life. We lost three, no problem. We had a pulse bomb. Oh, we're still behind? Let me use this Dragon Blade. In any situation in which those don't work out, all three of them, that is a bad fight, and now you put yourself behind the eight ball in your economy. 
they've got the guts and confidence in themselves to pull it off. The Excelsior on the rise. Absolutely, just standing out. Saviobi and Libero both completely outperforming their DPS counterparts on Soul Dynasty. It's gonna be up to Soul Dynasty here to shake things off during the break and get their heads together for the second map. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Sebiobi, Seoul, Korea. Sebiobi leading the charge. He said, how do you feel? He said, just one word, ready. Sebiobi has a lot of water. But in Korea, there are a lot of water. If you have a lot of water, you can call it a lot of water. I like to call it a lot of water. Sebiobi is falling down. Oh, he's going to get another one. He can't get both. <laughs> really tricky play by Sebiobi. I love it. 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 다 때려 부수는 걸 좋아해. 마음에 듭니다. 다 때려 부수는 걸 뜻밖의 게 있는 거. That first damage between Libero and Sebiobi. That is brutal. And there we go. The follow-up. Sebiobi is just going ham right now. Six plays. 나중에 찔러도 되니까 기다렸다가 정확한 타이밍에 누리면 되는 거죠. 상으로 누군가 찌르는 타이밍. 서울 팀 다이너스티. 다이너스티랑 맞붙고 싶은데 경기장에 오면 은 어, 다른 경기에서 느끼지 못한 것들을 느끼게 해줄게요. All right, welcome back from the break, everybody. There you have him, the man in question, Seb. You'll be on your screen. I absolutely love his name now that I understand what goes into it. 
what the meaning is. Morning Falling Star is like a Morning Star Rain. How sick is that? That's beautiful. He is the star of this team. He's the engine that makes this team go. So often they're waiting for him to initiate fights to get the picks in the back line. And he's just such a nuisance. What say Biobi does is combine all the good traits of all the best tracers. He's super aggressive. He can one clip people. He stays alive. We were just checking out stats between the break, and the DPS duo for Excelsior died half as much as the DPS duo on Soul. So they are staying alive, being a constant nuisance, and he was making Fleta's life miserable. No, Fleta, you could tell in the stats with Fleta as well, just not having the impact that we were expecting to see, just dying a bunch and really not finding any of the kills. Guess what? If you're under pressure like this and your team isn't able to back you up, and you've got a tracer that's just hounding you, one of the hardest, you know, one of the hardest heroes to put a pin in, to put a stop to, that's a nightmare situation. And so we'll have to see here. Lunar Colony, as you guys can see, will be our next map. Will Soul be able to get their heads in the game and figure out how to counter the DPS on New York XL? Because, well, you know, a lot of talk about Save Yobi, but Liver also really had a standout performance on the first map. Yeah, they shut him down on both of his best heroes, and it was a team effort. They took Farah, uh, Farah v. Farah, and then even when Save Yobi wasn't killing Fleta, he was making his life miss, like, just sitting below him, and then as soon as he shows up, and that makes a Tracer uncomfortable, and having to sit with your supports the entire time, it's not looking fun for Fleta. We'll see what they want to run here on the offense. There's a myriad of strategies on this map that we've seen. And then it's all going to change on second point. Of course, you can run a May on the second point. You can run a Sombra on first point. The world is full of possibilities. But I think if you're NYXL right now, and you just saw how well your defense worked on Eichenwald, mm -hmm. a similar strategy can easily be employed here on Horizon Lunar Colony. You can have that high ground. I'm wondering, looking at the comp now that we have for New York Excel, I'm wondering if they're going to get that high ground barrier kind of bunker build out there where Save Yobi is going to be able to stand uh, very safely behind the Orisa barrier. And then you've got Libero there. If they try and go tank, if they try and go high HP targets, he's just going to be throwing nades at them the entire time, wearing them down. It's going to make it very hard to enter. And this is a composition that we've seen on defense, especially. The Widow will have the advantage of sitting behind those static shields of Orisa. The Junkrat's going to be watching out for any sort of flankers generally as well. And Soul Dynasty, for now, as they're queuing up their heroes, seem to be running the strategy we've also seen. Jay Hong, a very versatile player. Of course, he mains support, but can play absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Got a Sombra in the mix. This is Flash's yesterday. Very, we're seeing the meta really develop on each LC here. Yeah, I'm, exactly. This this map is fantastic. We're seeing a real variety. Libero, though, will find the first kill again. He will be able to take down Munchkin. So, Soul, you can see, this is why they're just kind of standing there. Fleta wondering, well, what do we do now? That we wait. just feels bad. Maybe had the left side trapped up. That's where tracers like to go and get to the back line and pull them off of the points, but just unable. And that delays the point by a solid 15 seconds. Now is going to be the question. It's all feel here. When do New York Excel drop onto the point to contest it? And who's going to do it? I imagine it would be the Mecco on the Roadhog. Just throw that high HP target in there, hunt the tracer off, or, you know, in this case, obviously, the Sombra. Jay Hong hanging back, just putting a little bit of heat on here. Libero, not quite gonna get the mine. Yes, he does. Finds the kill. And in the meantime, Mecco gets the DMEC and the kill on Kuki. The issue right now is that both of the supports for NYXL went down early in that fight, thanks to a beautiful dive on the tanks that we said uh, was, happened off screen. However, even up though, the other supports on the side of the offense now taken down late. One tick will be on the board though. Quite a bit of progress, actually. Yeah. Considering how quickly. Um, Jae Hong was taken out of the fight. It seems like they weren't able to actually stop that first tick from happening. And so some progress made for Seoul Dynasty and still plenty of time on the clock, two minutes and a half. Well, they would like to take this pack room. That's the halt and hook right there. The reason they want to take that room is so they can hack that pack and make sure that EMP comes up quickly. That's why both the tanks are down there. Those tanks are wanting to take damage right now. You see Jae Hong at 95%. Any one more pack will mean that he will have EMP up, and that is the go signal for the offense. Exactly right. Now it's going to be about hitting those high-value targets. Mecco just chucks a bunch of bullets at Cookie's face off the hook as well. And he has the whole hog to continue pushing targets off of this point if he wants. And so Jayhong right now, he is hunting for the high-value targets, and he might be able to get that EMP. Mecco doesn't really matter for him. He's still going to be able to pick up the kills. And see if Ubi has won the fight versus Fleta in the meantime, but the back line gets cleaned up. And so it will be Soul Dynasty picking up this first point fairly quickly here. An apology is due from Jae Hong to Toby as he was going to try to hook the Sombra. Jae Hong translocated out and finds the consolation prize of Toby right behind it. It will not matter right now though as Ark is nearing his Valkyrie on the defense as the most stabilizing defense 
of ultimate that they could be using. Offensively, still sitting on the Sombra here. It's a little bit interesting. Usually, it's only a first point strategy, but they're charging it so quickly. One or two more packs, and they'll have another EMP available. Yeah, there you go. And that's why Samba, he's dancing up here. He's like, please shoot me. Please do damage. It's fine. I'll go back there, I'll heal up, and I'll keep getting some, uh, look at it, it's just, it's just happening, it's all play, it's a scripted, see, goes back, picks it up, and Jay Hong in 5% will have his ultimate. They might wait a little bit longer, because they've been prioritizing packs, Toby's not quite near his Valkyrie yet, you would like to be able to respond to a Valkyrie with one of your own, now Toby's getting in on the healing train at 85%, it is time to go, they're looking for targets. There it is, and that is, he hits the money targets, the perfect one, it's exactly what he was looking for, Arc did manage to dodge it, it looks like he will be able to get the res, but is he gonna be enough? Him solo healing, trying to keep his team in this fight. Zumba will have the self-destruct if he wants to use it to try and buy a little bit more time here, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like Soul will give up on this fight. Meko and Livero, between the two of them, just shredding it. But it looked like they had everything going there, Sibyobi and, well, not Sibyobi, but Soul. They had everything going, but Toby went down in that fight. So they were unable to answer a Valkyrie with a Valkyrie of their own, and that's generally going to be a disadvantage fight. However, you know me, Mr. Brightside, Silver Lining, Toby dying means they're gonna have the Valkyrie for the next fight, and the only thing to work with for the NYXL is going to be a Transcend. One of those ultimates is better than the other. And that's Jonak. Him getting EMP'd and dying so quickly kind of allowed him to save it too. And we've already had the change in roster now. Jae Hong back onto his trusty Zenyatta. Fleta will go for the McCree to reign supreme from the high ground, looking for these targets. He could get pressure, but guess not. Libero definitely did not expect that. He's dead, he's out of the fight, and Toby has already popped wings here to keep his teammates alive. Fleta, so long as he stays on this high ground, he is gonna be overjoyed. But what? as I say it, if you only get the pulse on him, doesn't matter though, because Toby's there with the res, and this is looking fantastic now for so oh, well, yes, for Soul Dying. This day. That's just pure hubris from Fleta. He's somersaulted into that pulse bomb. Says, I don't even need this life. I'm going to have another one coming up. However, a little bit of blue in the kill feed means that they only need a couple more. Defense has such a huge advantage. And the tanks have combined so well with Sabiobi's play to get to the back line. Mono yet again goes nuts. Mono has been remarkable on that Winston. He is constantly in the back line, beating up on those support players, on those squishies really making the difference. And despite things getting a bit out of hand there at start, you know, Libro not in it very early on at all. And when you've got Fled on the high ground like that, that's exactly where the McCree wants to be. He's just gonna be raining down death and destruction from above. That wasn't a fight they had to win, that was a fight they had to survive because now they need to reset their own support ultimates, arc back near it, so they're gonna hold on to these until they feel pressured. Sid Yobi lurking in the back line, will throw another pulse bomb. Hits the wall, a very elusive Zenyatta target up there. That was very slick. Flat out going for the roll as well, just trying to get out of there. And so now there will be no pulse, no early pick, but it doesn't really matter. Munchkin will be the one to take down Mano, the hero for New York Excel in the last fight. That is it, just like then, the blink of an eye. Soul collapse on the point and pick it up right from New York's noses. So Ark was hiding to stay safe because their win condition there was to have Valkyrie popped. He lost three very quickly. Valkyrie got popped, unable to get to the point on time. Even with those wings, flight not quick enough. Excelsior had a chance there, maybe a little bit too passive in their positioning. If you're taking a look at the stats real quick, Libero has been a little bit quieter in this first half defense, and so we'll have to see if he decides to wake up here going into the second half. Saviobi, though, I mean, we've seen the moments. He missed that last pulse, but he hit the one before it. I mean, Saviobi is still on bit on point. You're not going to hit all your pulse bombs, just, just period. It's not going to happen. So. I think the best tracers, in my opinion so far in the Overwatch League, have just been tossing them. They're, mm -hmm. they're getting them in about a minute. Uh, the very best one, they say Biobi is at one minute and three seconds right now, which is insane even for a tracer. So as soon as he gets it, he throws it out there. Because sometimes when you just land it and you just hit the right target, that fight's over. You can win a fight with that pulse bomb. No, exactly. So I'm really impressed right now with New York Excel. This is exactly what we were hoping for here. This is the battle between the top seeded team, Seoul Dynasty, who are currently sitting 5-0 and oh in the league versus the New York Excel, who dropped their first map yesterday. So no longer pristine, but still very much a threat. This is definitely going to go the distance. All we're hoping for is for a fifth map. I think everyone who's a fan of Overwatch and excellent Overwatches wants to see this one go to the distance. Unless, of course, you're a fan of one of the two teams. Matt calling Soul going 10 and 0. Bold, but you gotta be bold sometimes. No, Matt's a New Yorker, and he <laughs> went against his hometown team. Called out, Mr. X. For shame, for <laughs> shame. No pizza for him. I mean, Matt right now, this is 
This is really tough to call, though, because Seoul, it seems like they're coming back into their own here on this first map, on this assault map. But that first map, you know, Eichenwald didn't look too good for them, and so they're showing that there are weaknesses here, and that New York, they really focused on this match in particular for this week. All of their prep went into it, and a very quick strat. Well, it's the quad tank strat essentially coming out here from New York. Excel, look at how quickly Jonak is generating ult. I One fight, and he's got 50% already. I love this strategy. Even if it doesn't work, I love this strategy. They're going to take the ground away. It is Tank time right now. Jonak is going to get so much healing going on. They have a Lucio in the mix as well, so they're just going to clump up. They need to find an answer to do damage in a large area right now, does Soul. Oh my god, he's already got Coalescence. The fight has barely begun. This is unbelievable. Just gets the orbs out, makes sure that he keeps his teammates topped up. They're making progress right now. Seville, Soul have to find a way to challenge, but they're not quite managing it. It is going to be the two remaining players here, but Toby, I mean... You're not gonna last long if you're Mercy and you're facing down a Roadhog, a Diva, the wins everything there. Not the Winston this time, but the Reinhardt and that hammer hurts. Moira works so well with tanks because of a couple reasons. The orb is going to help out, yes, but that healing spray she does goes through targets and it hits a wide clump of people. But Coalescence works so well, it does healing and damage. That's a huge pick. They're gonna have to go for it. Coalescence is out. He's crossing the streams. This is unbelievable. There it is. The damage is dealt, but Jay Hong is there with the transcendence to keep him alive as well. Well, it will wear down eventually, and there's the Earth Shatter to lay everybody low, but the self-destruct will buy just a little bit more space, but as I say, it's Sam Yobi, takes down Jay Hong, he's looking for Flatite, and he's gonna get him! This is New York spinning out of control! Still trying to delay on this point, not quite getting enough. There's so many big bodies out there that they're just playing bouncer at the door. There's a Roadhog on one side, a Diva on the other. Where are you going to go? A good stall out last second from the Tracer, but they gotta start getting some kills. So there's the self, not quite gonna find anything it looks like. Instead, it's Libero, and there it is! Gets them all together, and that is exactly what they want. Perfectly done, what? The Graviton. Oh, they left Mercy out of the mix, which is gonna bring two back to life, but there is still everyone alive. Another Coalescence is crossing the streams of the healing and the damage on both, but this bought enough time. Still sold not out of this just yet. Moira, the, oh, I mean, she, well, now we have so much to work with here. Jaehong has decided to swap off to the Hannah. Not long, though. And Fleta has finally decided to go for the shotguns as well, trying to deal with these big, meaty targets, but he is not quite managing it. Instead, it's Sabiobi with the whole hog. Two kills and a point for New York XL. Five minutes and a half left in their time bank. They just rolled Soul Dynasty. I have two beautiful words I want to say. Moira Meta. I love that strategy. It is so fun to watch. You get those big bruisers in there quickly with the boost. And then Lucio is still around to keep everyone topped off. It allows Moira to not have to focus on damage. Yes, in those choke points, you want her healing everyone who's taking damage. But Lucio has got everyone healed up as well. So she can do so much damage output, especially on heroes that are difficult to deal with with some of the tank heroes. You get two beam heroes in this composition. Genji, D.Va, get out of here. You can't deflect beams. You can't defense matrix beams. And saw just completely focusing down the Genji, shut down. I love that strategy. Did Fleta get a single kill? I'm looking at the stats now. I mean, he's 8-8 eight and eight right now. Kind of wondering. I don't want to put that. Because this is a bit bizarre to see that Fleta is just getting completely shut down now after some of the performances we've seen from him within the first couple of weeks here of this league. But he is not having a pleasant time right now. They have done a fantastic job of just eviscerating him at every turn. And so now it will be the XL on the defense. Soul Dynasty flipping back over to the offense. And it looks like we may see a very similar setup here to what we saw in their first attempt. Jae Hong will be on the Sombra. And they should know this now. And it's going to be interesting to see if New York decides to rotate the moment that they sniff this out and take away that pack room. If you can take away that large pack room, it forces a different angle of attack from the other team, not letting them sit down there. And really, it's going to be up to Libero to really take down those small rooms and make sure that they can't charge up the somber EMP. Well, Jaehong is working his way along the spawn route right now towards some of those smaller packs. But they will be able to get into the lower room. Mecha, though. Gets the pick on Munchkin, and that's going to stall everything out here for Soul Dynasty. You do see Fleta hoping to find an opportunity, but that barrier is going to shut him out. 
And the res will happen, but again, Libero, so effective with the junk rat, and this time they are taking the fight. They rotated bottom left, and they are denying the big pack room here at New York Excel. Super smart, although the back half does come on from Sombra, trying to pull them out of position. It's just so difficult for the defense coordinate. Who's going back? Who's gonna actually put pressure on this point? Who's gonna guard pack room? And now, with most of the offense sitting on the point, they're gonna try to rotate and sit on point. Already two, nearly two ticks of progress taken now. Yeah, but one big thing here is that, you know, Jae-hong is nowhere near that EMP just yet. 60% only for him, and so if they can just find the pick early on, and there's the flank from Zumba trying to get into the back line, gets splash banged immediately, the stun, and for, yeah, sure enough, the d will happen. The save Yoli will be able to pick that one up, staying together, staying with the support, and also he does have Mecho there to watch his back. As I say that, though, Munchkin finds the kill. Did that just get back kept? some point in time. I mean, I was watching Kuki die three times in a row and he's still going for it, still fighting on the point, but Flata does come to life. All that fighting was happening and still no one put pressure on the point. That was a fight they had. Toby used his Valkyrie early. They used both resurrections on the Kuki. Art popped his late, but just bad positioning yet again. And here comes the blade, but Libero shuts it down immediately. Jaehong has got the EMP though, and so we'll be waiting to see when he decides to go for it. Exactly, it looks like he is gonna be backing off, just trying to hold it for now. We'll get the heal, we'll be able to reset, and so Soul, not very quick, but they need everything they can work with here, Hex. They only have a minute left on the clock. I'm gonna try to get similar positioning to his last EMP. You wanna get back in the corner onto those healers. One, an EMP might as well just delete Zen because it strips off shields automatically. He's down to 50 HP and a soft whisper will take him out. Ark then can't move out of position as well because all abilities go onto non-usable status, can't Guardian Angel out of there, and also it's very easy for Sombra to do that because she can be invisible. Oh, switching it up for the Widow with 30 seconds left. Now the name of the game is for Fleta to find a first pick and start the ball rolling here for Soul Dynasty. Somebody give him an angle, somebody give him a shot. Not seeing anybody right now, they're doing a great job. And as I say that though, there is going to be a bit of a push here coming in from Mauno, but that's fine, he has his shield down. And eventually, Cookie will find the key kill on Ark. No possible Valkyrie now, there's a big opportunity here for Soul. EMP went down into the corner on both of those healers, and now Flutter can absolutely clean up. Nobody is back alive. Say Biomi does take down Toby in the back line, but now he's gonna try to stall at the point. He's taken out, and with 1.9 on the clock, the offense will gain second point yet again. I love it, you see how hyped Jayhawk gets? That's the man who knows that they just robbed him. <laughs> XL. You would think that they would have the time to just set everything up appropriately and just bleed Soul out. Soul only had 30 seconds when that push started, but it was so perfectly executed. There's a lot of reasons why you put a support main onto Sombra, right? One, you don't want to give up a slot of the DPS because it really lowers your pill kill potential. Mm -hmm. The packs are going to do enough healing already. But also, Jaehyung knows where these supports like to be because he plays support on defense. He knows the corners that they want to be at. He knows the angles to take to get in there unseen. That EMP took off. I mean, obviously, Zen's just going to die when he gets EMP. That's going to happen. But then to get the mercy in that fight, you lose both healers right away. And this is a strategy you don't always see Sombra carried over from first point to second point, but they were doing such a good job of charging these packs and even spreading the healing around so that Toby has Guardian Angel up for, or sorry, Valkyrie up for these fights. Yes. They've been doing such a good job with this strategy. This has been a fun map. Yeah, this is what it's all about. Back and forth. And now, very curious to see what New York Excel have in store for us, considering how successful they were with the quad tank set up in the first offensive side. And we're more, uh, I think it was Jonak, he took him 33 seconds to charge his first ultimate, 45 seconds for the second one. I mean, that's abs that's bonkers. That's so fast. Three, two, one. Might get a bit of it, though. Let's see. Yeah, save Yobi. Save Yobi on. Do you think he's on the Widow just to see if he can get an early pick, or will he stick on it? I mean, it's definitely some pressure, and they're maybe hoping to get an early pick out here. But I think if you can send like three tanks in and then still have the Widow in the back line, you're creating so much chaos and opening on the point that he's gonna get free shots. Exactly right, he misses his opportunity though. Say Yobi had a real chance. It looked like Soul were thinking, okay, this is the same strategy again. Everybody get out there, just, you know, kind of bottle him up. And that gave him the chance to try and land a shot on some of the squishies. Zumba saves his tank friend, but only for the moment as Mako will take down Kuki after that. And now where do you even come in from? You're eating scrap through all of these doorways. There's no great entry here. Another hook will go down. Toby brings back Kuki, but not for long. Toby gives his life for it. Excelsior are gonna grab this point. What fantastic mind games, and there it is. Libero reigns supreme with the help of Sayobi. But is there anyone on this team who can't play a top tier Rodog? We've seen Echo do it, we've seen Sabiobi do it, we've seen Libero do it. 
Symbiobi with an interesting switch here. He's going to try to get Soldier 76 onto the high ground. His tanks are going to create all sorts of chaos on the point, and they're going to have to devote resources to go up there and deal with him. That means that one of the two tanks from Soul, who only have the mobility, are going to have to get up there, and now there's just going to be so much body on the ground. Yeah, but, uh, nope, not going to send it through. Maybe gets the flank. Yep, right around the back. Catches Libero immediately, and that's the big one that's going to slow things down. With the D-Mech on Mech and yes, this will reset it. Perfectly done here by Soul Dynasty. But New York, they have so much time to work with. They should kind of just brush the dust off their shoulders here, right? Okay, fair enough. And reset for the next fight. Yeah, no problem for them at all. And they know they're banking up these ultimates. The bit interesting thing, though, is they're not running a... Zarya, and that's one of the best ultimates in all of Overwatch, so no Graviton available, but a close second in ultimates as far as just game-winning fights. Mono has Earthshatter just about ready to go. Exactly. And one more shot, Mono. With the hammer, your reach, he is gonna be able to get out of it. Gets a pin on Munchkin! Munchkin, wrong place, wrong time! And now Mono's gonna be looking for the squishies, he's gonna be looking for the back line, and there it is! Earthshatter fully committed to Toby! No chance at all! This is a big chance here for New York Excel now to push onto the site. Jay Hong decides to use the Transcendence though, that's gonna buy valuable time. And Jonak, good positioning, allowing him to get as much healing out of that Coalescence as possible. Well, I hate to be anticlimactic, but this fight was over about 20 seconds ago when... Jonak died. When you're running all these tanks, they need more healing than that. And when Jonak goes down with Coalescence up, and that's going to zone people out and do damage, it's going to heal multiple tanks at a time. That one was over the moment he hit the ground. But I don't mind throwing ultimates after that, see if he can get a tick onto the point, because they're going to switch up their entire composition. They decided that that was enough of that comp, they were going to switch anyway. So that's why you see some of the questionable ults. They're not questionable, they were just going to change heroes anyway. Well, they get a tick out of it, and that's a big deal here with how close some of these fights are. So Excel, three minutes left on the clock. Jay Hong somehow finds the snipe, most likely a volley on Sibyobi. And now you can just see the spam, witness it in all of its glory. Grenades, it's not a doorway. Spam, sir, it's tactical area denial. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, I love it, the terminology, let's go. Just a tad bit of spam. Oh, Libero though, with a Helix Rocket, no less. Denies the tire access to the back line, and that's a big kill, that's a big shutdown. And so Fleta, you can see he's being clever with his positioning. Is he gonna go all the way back over here? He's gonna need a tank with him. The problem is you can't just let both of these hit heroes hang out up top. Libero with a sneaky helix. Takes on a big damage healer, brought right back to life though. Exactly, Toby will immediately bust out the wings, and this is gonna get the reset going. I hope they don't commit anything to this, because Toby busting out the wings there was a little bit questionable. Maybe they can go in, they're gonna use Transcend, and now I guess it's time to fight. They're gonna have a much leader Valkyrie or needs to stay alive. Oh, oh, what was that? The hook, it doesn't do anything at all. The hook right into the barrier, self-destruct gets nothing, and this is Jay Hong now going for the Transcend. Hoping to keep the teammates here in this fight still, and at least keep a presence on the point. He is invulnerable. Whoa, gets a rebel wall. There, he felt the brush of death, and Mecco really wanted that kill. Mecco's angry about that. Ark had just popped Valkyrie before this preemptively, so he can bring everyone back to life. That's why you see the flood of kills coming in. One more brought back to life. Safe Yobi will be out of it permanently, but they might not need it. New York captures the point. 90 second advantage as we go into round number three. Of C. And we show it, we're really getting to see the depth in the rosters in both of them. You're right, you're pointing it out. Everybody can play Roadhog. Every, everybody can play everything. X. Actually, you know, on the drop of a hat, it feels like it's all part of the plan. They're just switching it up constantly. New York, man. This is everything we were hoping it would be. Tied up four to four now. And really, not a whole lot of time here for Soul to work with. But then, you know, they showed us that they're capable of working with fine margins in the last half on offense. They'll have a minute this time though. So very curious now, are we going to see the Sombra again here? Are they gonna try and stick to their guns, Soul Dynasty, or are they gonna change it up and try something different? I, mean, I could see anything right now and it wouldn't surprise me. I was a little bit surprised though that Soul didn't try to make the blind read and maybe run a Reaper, knowing that the four tanks were coming out. I mean, that's in theory supposed to be the best counter to it, but also, Reaper, even though there's tanks on the field, is not always the best option. You need to get the damage in. And Reaper with almost zero mobility, not always the best choice either. So a lot of mind games going on between these two teams, and I expected nothing less. 
As did we all, as did we all. This is, I mean, top team in the league right now in Seoul Dynasty. New York XL, top three. These are the top dogs going at it right now. Fangs out, and already, barrier set up, high ground. Bit of a change this time, however, for the XL. We don't have a Widow in play. It'll be Libero. I mean, well, Libero's been pretty pretty fire on the Junkrat, so we'll see how they're gonna be able to deal with this Seoul Dynasty, because they are already down to 50 seconds left. When you see a Junkrat and a Roadhog on the same team, it's usually to prevent from dive. You're gonna get picks early, just like that one on Kuki. <laughs> that trap! Sebiomi cleans it up, and that is that. First fight already over, already won. And no ultimates really charging for the side of Soul. When you lose people like that, you can't charge up your EMP, you can't charge up your Valkyrie. Typical start. Very much so. 20 seconds left on the clock now, pretty much. You can see Jay Hongi, it looks like he's gonna get that push going, trying to draw them back. See, Yobi is here to mine the point, however. Not a bad duel between, you know, Sombra and Tracer, unless, exactly, unless Jay Hong gets the hack! And there it is! Gets the fast, he pulls the fast one on Save Yobi and gets that first kill. One tick, tick and a half, we're nearly there. Finally has to back off and give ground, and the, well, we're now about to get into overtime, and this is where it's all gonna go down to Matter. Libero will get the pick on Jay Hong, though. No possible EMP now in this next fight, but Koki keeping the pressure on. Jaehyung was invisible and just 8 and 8. Just a lady luck on the side of Libero as he's able to take down Munkin in turn as well. Still a brawl on the point. Kuki is a little bit outgunned at the moment. He's going into one of his hard counters in Roadhog. But Flata shows up to the show late. We'll take down two. This is a nail biter. No way. No way. Two takes. And this is going to be the first point for Soul Dynasty. How did they sit it? They had a minute, Hex. They had a minute. Recovered, good poise there. Fleta with a couple of late kills there. It buys them enough time. Toby comes back into the mix. Toby's nearing his own Valkyrie. We have another EMP up. If I'm the Excelsior supports, I'm not hanging out in the same corner. Fool me once. Oh, certainly. Yes, they definitely have to know that the EMP is going to be a factor, but we're already getting kills. There's the trade, though. Toby out of the fight very early on. Fleta, however, still in this, and now he's got the infrared. He's going to be able to line up those shots even easier. Looking for it, the follow-up here on Sebiobi. Sebiobi, not got an easy target to hit, especially with the blinks, the recalls, but never mind! Fleta gets the job done. It seems like they can actually be patient if they keep time on the point. I know it's overtime, but it does not matter. Arcs Valkyrie now out of existence. Toby will sprout his own wings and keep his team alive on the point, and they need that extra healing. Now they've lost one, they've lost two. A huge bunch of kills. Is Toby gonna be able to bring enough back to life? gonna be the big question as Libero with the Dragon Blade will finally remove Munchkin from the fight and it is just gonna be Toby drifting down to certain death and it will be the end. Five to four. But what an impressive performance from Soul. You can never count these guys out of any fight. Absolutely unreal. One minute on their starting clock. They get first point, that's not enough. They get themselves 47% progress. That is the bar, that is the goal for the New York Excelsior. If they wanna take a 2-0 map lead, Soul still trying to hold on and make this one a good fight. Dude, the desk are gonna have a field day with this at <laughs> halftime. After this, we'll be going to the desk and I cannot wait to hear what they have to say. Reinforce in particular, I think it's gonna be a joy. But, whew, all right, Reinforce, by the way, go and check him out on Twitter, one of the analysts. He did a flow chart breaking down all of Soul Dynasty's yeah. strategies, how their players play. It's fantastic stuff, it's deep. Definitely go and check him out, but, this is it, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and now we're gonna be getting into it, and we're gonna see, are the XL gonna be able to keep that mental armor up? Can they keep focused enough to get the job done here? They have a lot of time to work with, two minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, it does seem like they're posturing to do quad tank yet again. They're loading up for it, say Biobi onto the Roadhog, doesn't matter who's on the Roadhog, they can all do it. There goes Jonek onto the Moira, and yeah, it's quad tank it is. Interesting, a little different setup this time for the Soul Dynasty, perhaps anticipating this. They are going to run a dive defense with Fleta on the Junkrat instead. They're going to have to just jump on him the moment they come in. Jesus, look at how much damage they're doing. But there it is, the boost. Get him onto the point quick. Get him out of that open ground. But look at how much damage they're taking, XL. This is where Junkrat excels. Fleta just nearly got his ultimate already. That is obscene. And instantly with the rip tire, will they be able to dodge it? Who's gonna get caught in the open? And sure enough, only the one, but it's Jodak. That's the healing gone for New York XL. That's all that matters right there. There will not be enough healing to keep these tanks alive. 
kills are coming in back and forth, but it is Soul Dynasty with a massive advantage. They're only staying here. I don't even know why to stall. You're trying to get a third, hopefully that they jump off, but this is all time for the reset, very likely for the NYXL. Trying to get out with their lives, and now they self-stagger there. Probably should have given up that fight a little earlier. Now they've fed up a lot of ultimate charges. They're not switching up compositions necessarily. Oh wait, yes they are. Arc moves over to the Mercy. Say will be back on the Tracer. It looks like they're changing up their composition for the most part. Five changes out of the six-man roster. This crushes your own economy. They will not have ultimates up for this next fight. Luckily, they still have over a minute in their time bank. That's what they're, they've got to be banking on. All right, right. We got the push. It didn't work. They didn't even get a tick, though, Hex, and that's a big deal. Need to get some of that progress, because now they're in the same shoot that Soul Dynasty were in, and they aren't quite comfortable here. They're a bit tight, and Samba will be finding the kill to repel this attack. Mano already pounded into the ground. It's gonna be so close for them to build up ultimates that are gonna win this fight. And Soul Dynasty is going to play it very close to the vest. They're gonna keep all their important ultimates in their pocket here. I actually would have liked to see Tank remain because you're gonna get close to a grab, you're gonna get close to a shatter, but they've decided to go the other route with it. Now ultimates are starting to come online, so it's going to be extremely close. I believe every important ult will come online by the time this next fight happens or they take it with any seriousness. Punch him. Snake in the grass right there. Give Livero a little bit of a heart attack, and they will manage to do quite a bit of damage here. You can see XL, the healing throughput is huge, and somehow the collapse on a cookie, but it doesn't matter because Kobe has got the foul kill, get the rest, and we will have the reset, but that is a big kill! Jonak taking Zomba out of the fight! Absolutely enormous. Toby used his Valkyrie very early, knowing that there's only 15 seconds left, and he's got 15 seconds for people. Another huge kill, but the tire takes down Ark, who's holding on to his Valkyrie! Unbelievable, they may be able to do this to withstand the attack. The back line is dead for XL. Now it's a matter of cleanup, but you're still having to deal with the likes of Saviobi. And right now, the man is staying alive, but he's all alone. He's trying to get out of Dodge, but he'll get hunted down by Kuki. Overtime is burning, and Soul Dynasty. Oh no, the tap! Somehow they managed to get back onto it just in time. Arkes Valkyrie is able to fly back. He does bring back two, but he will give up his life. That is no more sustain on the point. Soul still knocking them off of the point and about. Not enough healing for NYXL. And the overtime, the longer it goes that wick, the quicker it burns. And in the end, yes, Livero, he got back to life for the fact that he backed off that point. That's all Soul needed. What a fantastic second map in this series. Soul showing I mean, true resilience to have such a rough start to the map and to just show the grit necessary to hang in there. Flutter ain't dead, best. The ain't dead yet. Best tire of the year. Absolutely won that fight and made New York XL have to scramble to get back in. We're tied up 1-1. One, one. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
and it is currently halftime in this heavyweight fight. What a matchup we have seen already. New York comes out swinging in Seoul. They bounce right back, and we're all tied up one apiece. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Chris Puckett, and we've brought back in Sideshow and Reinforced to break down all of the early action here in our first matchup. Coming in, we said this is a battle of some juggernauts, and right away, we saw some major improvements. Johnny, we even saw a Reinhardt in play today. Yes, fantastic. You know, not really the hero to go to in this meta, but finally, Mano, thank you. We saw the Reinhardt. And no Earth Shattering Shields either, so that's a plus <laughs> one for me. Mano right. played everything. Mano played the Roadhog at a certain time on Ikeval. He played the Orisa when they were pushing Horizon, played the Winston, played the Ryan. It's a big improvement, I think, coming over from playing uh, uh, Janus yesterday. Speaking of improvements, it's time to drop some knowledge bombs here in our insights powered by Intel. It's reinforced, walking us through what New York was doing to better control space here today. Well, Saibiolvi was the player of the match so far and away, and he's going to take this Tracer battle with Munchkin, and that is going to be the key Thing about this replay here. New York Excelsior, they're going to take all of this space because we talked about how Seoul Dynasty is more of a passive team, okay? So as we play this clip out, we're going to see that uh, New York Excelsior is going to contest the space and high ground that Seoul Dynasty contains. Now, because Saibiolbi in the top right corner of the screen here, he's going to win this Tracer battle versus Munchkin, that this will force the supports of Seoul Dynasty back and Rija Hong is going to look to put that Harmony Orb onto Munchkin to help him out. Now, we talked about Kuki being a very passive tank, so that means that he's not going to be comfortable controlling this high ground, and he's going to fall back with his support either, leaving Flera on the Widowmaker pretty much all by himself, not having any space. And so as we look at Mono, the more aggressive of the two uh, Winston tanks, I would say, on New York, he's going to be so happy, just leaping forward, grabbing all of this space, and eventually this is going to leave Seoul with pretty much no space at all, or just in a circle over here. So we're going to play this one out, and we can just see how much space New York Excelsior has to deal with. And Flera on the Widow, which we hyped up so much. I mean, he has pretty no much nothing to do. He's finding himself under the castle itself. And Mecco is going to jump at him. And we can just see this fight play out with New York having so much space to dictate the fight. How they want to engage this fight. Which yesterday versus Philadelphia Fusion, we saw that it was Philadelphia who dictated the fight. With Shadowburn and Carpe setting up the offenses. So this aggression is really paying itself off for New York. And so Biolbi, he's just shining so much. Uh, Sabiolbi has had a phenomenal game so far. And when we set up what Sol are trying to do in this match with Cookie, and they're playing slightly more passive and trying to get Fledder into positions, Sabiolbi is ruining all of that. Because if Munchkin can't win that Tracer Duel and buy space for his team, then they can't get set up in a position. And NYXL can take all the other rest of their five players and jump on them as they're trying to get set up. They're, they're totally unprepared. They don't have the positioning. They need to be more aggressive. Now, this is completely shown in the head-to-head -head stats that we've got up here between Munchkin and Sabiolbi. Now, with the killed opposing Tracer, this is their head-to-head -head stats. So even though Munchkin was running away from a lot of these fights, Sabiolbi still finished him three times to Munchkin zero. It forced Munchkin to play so uh, so kind of safe and passive and kind of scared as well. And if you look at the eliminations and deaths as well, Sabiolbi was having a hell of a game on Eichenwald, and it just ruined Soul's strategy, absolutely. He had more kills on the opposing Tracer than he hit, had total deaths in yeah. that first game. Ridiculous stuff from the New York XL's Tracer. Sabi Olby putting on a show. Johnny, last week you told me he is the best Tracer in the game. What has he shown you so far in the first two maps? Well, that he is the best Tracer in the game, myself. And he flexes onto the Widow and the Solier on map two as well. As we move on to that map and discusses it, we saw that Sabiolbi, they were playing the quad tank, of course, with the Moira. Then we saw Sabiolbi on the Widowmaker and the Tracer. So they were kind of flexing and adapting to Soul Dynasty, which we really haven't seen any team do versus Soul, uh, Soul Dynasty before, because they are often the teams dictating the kind of play style. But with the flexing coming out of New York Excelsior, they're the guys on top who has the advantage in pretty much every fight. Yeah, I would say that what was most evident to me watching these two, first two maps is that New York Excelsior are so prepared. They know exactly what Sol are going to run into them. They've got cool little niche strats set up to try and take advantage of Sol playing a little more passively into them. And the preparation that they've put into this game has been phenomenal, and it's forced Sol to make the kind of on-the-fly adaptation. Now, we highlighted the Tracer play from Sabi Olby, but he's not the only DPS player in this game for New York. York. Libero had a massive play at 
the end of the first game. And we're going to go back. Sideshow, walk us through this final fight here as we see the hold on Eichenwald. This was crazy because you can see Jonak and Ark sat at the back here. And uh, Cookie makes this leap to try and deal with the support. And Libero realizes, this is my time. Sinks up with Sabi Obi as he comes in. And Libero gets massive value out of this Dragon Blade. Slices through Toby while he was in Valkyrie. Yeah, exactly. Toby pops the Valkyrie in the final fight. But then Libro, he pulls out the Dragon Blade, gets his extra dash reset, of course, and then just dashes up onto air and gets Toby and plucks him out of the sky. And that was a key play. So key play from Libro, who he yesterday is sort of underrated. He wasn't performing as well versus the Philadelphia Fusion, but he has really stepped it up for this game. Now, if you're looking at this matchup, it's kind of like an MMA fight. You had New York come out, they hit the head kick, right? Soul is reeling, as we saw in our next game. Let's go ahead and start showing you some of these highlights, because it all opens up with New York. The quad take was just running through Soul. Flutter had some nice plays on the Widow, but you look at this first half, so they have, what, two minutes for their second attack? Meanwhile, it's almost six minutes in the bank for New York. And somehow, by the end of this game, it's Seoul walking away with the victory. As we're watching through the highlights in chronological order, talk me through some of the big moments of the game, Sideshow. So New York Excelsior coming out with this quad tank push was phenomenal. And Seoul instantly made an adaptation. They moved Fletter from the Genji over to the Junkrat, which deals so much more damage. But Sabi will be ready. This is the preparation that we're talking about. Sabi will be went over to the Widowmaker, so that Fleta couldn't get that kind of jump round performance. And because we saw three whole iterations, we saw the different mind games between these two teams. Are they going to run quad tank on the offense? Can we afford to put uh, Fleta on the jump round, or should we run the more uh, stable dive kind of compositions? Uh, in the end, Sol were able to make the adaptations. Yes, and this kind of in-game adaptation is what we highlighted before, of course. It was really impressive to see that when the flat out swapped onto the Widowmaker, which he favors, it seems to be his go-to hero, the Widowmaker, of course. Then Libro immediately swaps from the Junkrat to the Genji. And I mean, that is a key moment, of course, because then you have Mono, the aggressive Winston, and you have uh, Libro on the Genji diving onto Flatter. So Flatter, he's just getting shut down all the time. And he's not getting these highlight reels, which we saw before the game, where he just pretty much wrecks all the other teams in the league. Well, to be fair, though, at the end of Horizon and throughout the process of adaptation, I really felt like Fledder was given much more space by his team. Although he was shut down really hard on Eichenwald, they made some adaptations. Cookie started playing a little bit more aggressively, and they spread out to make a bit more space from Fledder, and he was able to hit those shots that he saw. Fledder's finally able to shine towards the end of that game, and we're going to keep our eyes on Fledder moving forward. This is a star-studded battle. Five of our six players from the World Cup Championship team that represented South Korea are in action today. And I got to get your thoughts before the break. New York's looking stronger than we expected, but what is the official prediction starting with you, Johnny? What happens as we go into games three and four? I'm actually going with Seoul Dynasty for this one, simply because they are so clutch on stage. We've seen previously in grand finals, over and over, they come back, they re reverse sweep often in Apex grand finals, and I believe they have the, the confidence on stage to bring it back and actually overpower New York today. I think five people out there cheered with you, Johnny. <laughs> yes. For some reason, Seoul is not the fan favorite in this matchup. Sideshow, what do you expect to see happen? Well, we're going into Oasis which is a control map. Presumably, they're going to maybe bring Pine into the equation. Having said that, Oasis is going to be fantastic for Fletter rather than Pine. So this, this battle between the two of them, Oasis is going to be so pivotal. But I still have to agree with you, Reinforce. I think I would give the edge to Sol because they're so good at making on-the-fly adaptations. Who else out there wants to see Pine in a game three? <laughs> already a legend and it's just week three the action continues on the other side of this break you don't want to miss it pine on oasis versus fleta are you kidding me it doesn't get better than that we'll be right back the overwatch league is brought to you by toyota let's go places
You wanted a blockbuster match? Time to break out the fancy cookware. And NYXL coming out on top in a lot of these engagements. Alpine's starting to feel Ooh. it. <laughs> this might be the go signal for Seoul Dynasty now. No resurrection, no second chances. This is some close quarter stuff. Toby's waiting in line to show the world what he's made of. And it seems to have done the job. That's a pure 1v1. And they bring it home in style. Welcome back from the break, everybody. This is it. We're two maps into a complete and utter, well, I mean, fantastic match here, Hex, because this has just been everything Dynasty have been showing exactly why they're at the top of the pack. They didn't give up in that second map, and we're tied up one to one. Very rarely do things live up to the hype, and this is definitely up to it so far as we're tied up one one. Next two maps will win the series. I'm hoping we're going to five again because hey. maybe, maybe we'll see one of our favorite players, Pine, come in. It does not seem like he's going to be playing the next control map, which is Oasis, which makes a little more sense. Yeah. He's the terror of Ilios, but Oasis, not so much. Yeah, I would say, you know, sorry to let your hopes down, guys. I know Pocket was getting you hyped up. I know Pocket was just like, you know, are you ready to see Pine? And all of us, me included, are like, yeah, Pine, no. <laughs> But that is not going to be the case. In fact, neither team is going to make a change here. Subless going into the third map. And so it seems like they want to stick to their guns to what they've practiced. Yeah, probably a lot of far v far. Oasis is a great map for it, but mm -hmm. a person who needs to maybe step up. Got a little bit of a pep talk. We walked by him in the hallway as Ark had a little bit of a couple shaky lives there at Mercy, and he's a very emotional player. Got taken aside by his coach. He's going to look to rebound here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody in the community, you know, if you're not a fan of Ark, check out his stream, get to know him because he is a fantastic guy. So, you know, perhaps feeling a little bit of the pressure there. New York, you know, that's why I thought that they would bring out Pine regardless, because it feels like Pine has just got that confidence and he doesn't care. The devil may cry corner of like, let's just get in there and mess them up. So maybe in New York, they kind of needed that going into this map because Seoul has shown just how resilient they are. That was a map that New York had all the advantages on in Horizon Lunar Colony. They had more time in the bank. They had ultimates banked up, but the tire changed everything, able to take yeah, down both yeah. supports. And with the changes that the tire went through in the last several months, it's much easier to get vertical and take down Mercy's. You need that burst damage, because if you just tickle her, she's gonna regen right away. Mm -hmm. That's why you see a lot of Widows going against a Mercy in the sky, but tires have been just as effective. You need that hard burst damage that's gonna pop right through that regen. Because it does kick into overdrive in Valk. There's no longer a delay, right? You know, you need a, a two to three seconds, you know, and then she starts regening HP. If she doesn't have Valk, when she has Valk, it's instant. That's why she's so hard to kill. So, I mean, well, we shall see. We shall see how it plays out. Pretty sure that we are going to see a Mercy here for Soul. I mean, Fleta is rocking the Pharah, but he is not going to have his counterpart. Okay, there we go. It's Jaehong who's playing the Mercy, who's going to be backing him up and boosting his rockets. Well, Lucio's very good on control maps, this map in particular, because you're going to fight in a very small area, generally around the point. It's a big map, but you only really fight in this area on the point. And that is an interesting switch at the last second to put Jaehong on the Mercy. We need a Mercy on this map. New York going with a different strategy. Jonek will be on his Zenyatta. It's going to make the tanks that much more vulnerable for Seoul. Exactly right. You're going to have that Discord orb, 30% increased damage taken. And that is a big difference when you're talking about a Roadhog or somebody who's just a big, fat target that you want to try and lay low as quickly as possible. So still the fight going on here. Neither team picking up that percentage to start things off on the first point of this map. But Seoul have done a very good job of maintaining positional awareness here. Taking jo down Jonak early was huge. It forces out the early resurrection from Ark because Ark's main goal is to keep Libero alive in the sky. He can't be spending his time on the ground keeping everyone healthy. And that's why you're gonna lose you on this point is because he can keep that ground fight alive. Farah and Mercy, they're called pharmacies oh. together. For a reason, they're often only going to be playing the buddy system. Exactly right. You're gonna get that pocket healing and also the damage boost coming from your Mercy. You can see when you have those arrows going up on your screen, on Fleta's screen. It means that his rockets are going to be dealing that much more damage. Let's see, you'll be getting clipped at the beginning there, and you can see him. He's on a bit of a flanking mission right now, trying to find somebody out of position, but it doesn't look like he's going to get any reward in just yet. Can tap the point, though, to try and draw them out. Definitely banking ultimates on both sides of things here, and it's going to be interesting to see which Farah pulls the trigger on the barrage versus a huge meta rocket. It's going to force save Yobi to recall. So then a little bit low, still safe. You'll be managed to find the kill on Zumba, but Jaehong is there with the res. We'll bring him right back into the fight immediately. Fleta trying to get out of harm's way, and he will, it looks like. Repositioning both of the back line fairly low, and Fleta managed to get the barrage out immediately, but Jonak will trade it very quickly. Now Toby decides to commit the sound barrier to this fight, but in the meantime, Ark bringing his teammates back to life. 
New York seems like they have a bit of an edge here. Mirage very likely a one-way ticket. That's why he went down immediately. He's a target sitting right in the sky, able to take him out. But really, what brings this fight back for New York is that Ark was so patient on his Valkyrie. Jayhawk popped it early in that fight. They waited it out, waited it out. Ark brings his team back later. They get the advantage off of that. So now, well, back and forth. Kind of what we expect to see on this point in particular as well. A lot of 99 to 99, you know, back and forth. And we saw how how long it took for either team to even start generating percentage at the beginning of it. So now it's going to be New York's turn. Keep an eye on Mecco here. The self-destruct so good on this map to take down a Farrah and a Mercy if they want to hang out over the ocean. There's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. And he's got self-destruct ready right now. Maybe looking for an angle, waiting for the pharmacy to come in. They do force a transcend out early. Oh, huge hook! Oh, that's so big! But what a hero Cookie is! Backs up just in time and keeps his teammate alive. Mono not able to capitalize off the hook. Looking to take the plate damage though, looking to take the fight. He's gonna miss another one here, but still staying alive. That is what's key. Jonak with the high ground will just rain in death and destruction from above. Looking for one of the smaller targets and not quite gonna get it, but Sadioli is there to work with him. Fleta is out. Jihong waited for his Valkyrie until after the self-destruct had already been used. He knows he's vulnerable in that state. That Valkyrie will bring back everyone to life and Soul is cleaning up on the ground. They will take control of the point yet again. Back and forth as could possibly be. Just relentless. It's like watching a glacier. Just grind everything into dust in front of it. It takes a while, right? It's, they're very patient because they have to be. But eventually, Soul, they end up moving out ahead. So they start getting in. 80% now on this first point for Soul, and it's gonna be on New York to turn things around. As far as the ult's are concerned, Libra will have Barrage very soon here, and Mono just got his whole hog. A lot of this is going to be on Ark, though, as he's going to have Valkyrie much faster than Jayhawk. Jayhawk's already used two Valkyries, Ark only one, so Ark will use an early resurrection there. Still going to have Valk. Sabioli brought back to life, trying to find an entrance here, but Fleta is sitting over the top, denying all the flight paths. Woo! Trying to pull faster on Libero? I think not. Sound Barrier is there, though. Has already been committed very early on in this fight. Mano has already used his whole hawk, but he's already got 40%. He'll have his ult fairly quickly here if he keeps alive. And Fleta still looking for an opportunity to use the barrage, and as I say it, manages to unlock one kill. Could get a second as well. Needs to get out of the self-destruct range, though, and he will survive it. The longer they can stall this fight, the better. Ark's Valkyrie has now over Jaehong 5% away. If he can stay alive, he could be able to bring his team back into this fight. They're down one man so far in Fleta. Can he get the Valkyrie in time to save Fleta before Fleta respawns? Oh, I thought he got the stick there, Munchkin. That was so close. But it's not meant to be. Safe. He'll be just pressuring him relentlessly right now. Does still find the Jonak in the back line, but Mako will be there to turn it around. And you can see Jaehong just dancing. Such a hard target to hit when he's got Valk. He is so fast, but he's the last one, and it doesn't matter. You can't outrun the orbs, especially when it's Jonax who's aiming him. A game of milliseconds as Fleta was dead. He tried to resurrect him, but Fleta went back to respawn before the res could come through. And that means Jaehong is going to have no vertical escape. The reason you always see Mercy with Farah, even before Mercy was very, very good, was she needs the vertical out. She needs to escape up into a different plane and to be safe there. With Fleta being unable to resurrect it, Jaehong was an easy target to close out that fight. And now, yet again, Ark will have a huge advantage if New York can stall out this map. I'm curious to see when Zumba will decide to go for the self-destruct. Is this just going to be used for a new mech or not? He is taking quite a bit of damage here, dropping about half HP. Mako managed to get his as well. And sure enough, self-destruct committed. Jump, cast off the edge, and he dies! But somebody's there to turn it around. You lost your mercy, but Zumba with a massive triple kill on the self-destruct. Ark's gonna bring two of them back to life, but they have their work cut out for them. They're still at a disadvantage, even with those two people being resurrected. In the meantime, Jaehong is gonna move over to Ana to try to come back to this point. He's not on Mercy anymore, but say Yobi is cleaning up on the ground. Toby able to get some fancy footwork and stay out. 99 to 99, next fight wins this one. Exactly right, because that overtime wick is burning, and you can see it's getting faster and faster. Sure enough, it'll tick. Jaehong not able to get in there to touch the point fast enough. Fleta as well, he was right on the edge. But again, you have to keep an eye on that overtime wick. The longer it's there burning, the quicker it'll go as soon as somebody isn't contesting. Ark with the redemption arc of himself, able to pull it back right there. Very patient in his play, and that was a reason that New York generally had the advantage when they needed it. That one was so back and forth in the timings. This giant self-destruct took down so many people. 
Jay Hong off the edge over there, but it did not matter. He's able to get back into it. It is strange he goes back to Ana, though, because if Mercy can get back to the point faster, perhaps, if someone comes back to her so she can Guardian Angel there. Sometimes you'll even send your Tracer back towards spawn so that you can Guardian Angel to the Tracer. Right, Double right. blink, another Guardian Angel in there. It's on low cooldown, and then you have the big healing output. It wasn't meant to be, though, this time. It wasn't meant to be, despite the monster self-destructing Zumba, which is so cool to see. When you get those big kills, that kill feed lights up in blue. Or in white in this case. Still. Do have a McCree on the field. It just happens to not be fine. Say Biobi, no slouch of his own. Jonak is a sniper in an Omnic body. Takes out Toby with an orb volley to start this fight. That fight is over off a of one kill. That's unbelievable. Toby right now. He's gotta be sick to his stomach. How does Jonak keep finding these kills? Might as well be running 3 DPS when you've got Jonak on Zen. Man, got some sort of Omnic upgrade to give him a scope on those volleys. He is absolutely crushing it at a distance, no less. So now it's a bit of a stand game here. Soul sussing out the defense, trying to find an angle to work with. You still have Fleta alive in the back line, and so they are a bit sandwiched here, XL. They have to be careful. Fleta, as I say it, managed to find the pick on Jonak, and the kill on Libero as well. Fleta showing that he can have the impact here for his team. Turn it around for him. He eventually gets halted to his death by Mono, but the damage is done. Those two kills turn the tide for Soul, and the point should take over for them. I think they knew they were going to let it tick over there, because even though Ark reaches his Valkyrie in that fight, both of the people he wanted to resurrect were going to be dead too long, so they're back into spawn. So very patient of him to save it there. Meanwhile, though, Toby, even though that early death cost him some ult charge, will very likely have his Valkyrie to his next fight. The ultimate I want to look at is going to be Save Yobi's Deadeye, one of the best ways to take down and ulting Mercy in the sky. See if he can find the angle. Jonak down again to Fleta. Unbelievable. And those are just grenades thrown out, you know, forgotten about as he sets up for his rip tire, looking for a target just to, well, point blank onto Mecha, and that facilitates the kill. Mono is gone as well. Both of the tanks, they will get rezzed. However, at least Mono will get rezzed by Ark as Jonak was brought back to life earlier. But Toby, in the meantime, will not be able to get the follow up. It's Libero who gets the kill on Toby. Nothing for the Valkyrie for Soul. Say, Biobi had been saving that Deadeye just for that moment. He had the Mercy right into his sights, unable to actually finish that kill, but it does not matter. No ult gets back onto the point, but I don't think New York is going to have the staying power or the firepower to flip this point back over. It's time to reset. They are getting caught in a bit of a sandwich, and sure enough, there it is. You got a ton of monkeys just landing in your face, and Koki gets rid of Echo. Still going back and forth here. They're burning a lot of ultimates in New York in an attempt to bring this back. Positioning has to be reset for Soul, and it looks like they might be able to actually take back. Nope, last second steps on the point. Zuba's gonna go with his life for it. Trapped in here in the corner. Jonak out for blood. Reign Supreme, as always. He will eventually get ganged up on, though. Munch can connect to kill there with the help of Kuki. Same goal you can see. Not wanting to show himself, definitely does not want to be opening himself up to damage from those grenades. But he has another dead eye. So is it a matter of waiting for Toby and the Valk again, or does he just try and use it to create space for his opponents or for his team here? It's questionable if he knows the percentage they're at. Most of these pro teams are very good at tracking the percentage. I think they're looking for a hero play up top with the dead eye so that he can take this high ground, zone them out at the very least. Ark will have Valkyrie beforehand. Or or they just don't touch the point at all. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, guys. Sometimes that happens. This is becoming an issue, though, period, because on Horizon Lunar Colony, it happened to them a couple times. There is some situational and positional awareness that cannot be happening at that high of a level. They had bodies alive. Maybe they're not the bodies you want on the point to stall, but you're definitely not going to win the map if you don't at least try to stall. Yeah, perhaps focusing a little bit too much on the dead eye there, and the capabilities, the possibilities, trying to make it happen instead. Well, we're tied up one to one go in the distance on this third map in this series. And it's tied up one to one in maps as well between these teams. Soul winning the last one. So they have a bit of that favor, the momentum going their way. And we will have the pharmacy back in the fight. Livero and Ark as a duo, Fleta and Jay Hong hanging out together as well. Ground war healing advantage definitely goes to the team with the Lucio, but damage advantage goes to the team with Zenyatta. So it's about which style you prefer playing. Fleta, man, that was a big opportunity. Not being able to follow up on it, though. He's not going to worry too much, doing tremendous damage to Mako to start. And he decides now is the time to put the pressure back on Libero. Libero doesn't seem to be concerned at all with Fleta, though. He doesn't really seem to be trying to deal with this Pharah at all in a direct way. 
Well, as a fur, you want to try to chip in on the ground war, but who needs to even try to chip in on the ground war? A lot of this always comes down to the tracer on the ground. She's your main damage dealer when you're having these 4v4 ground fights. The far v fur are going to try to occupy each other, find those brief moments where you can help out, throw down a damage boosted rocket, and soften up those targets for your tracer player. Say, Biobi started that fight off by cleaning up on the ground. They will wrestle first control. And controls on Oasis, and they're so hard to wrestle back. You have to win a very clean fight. A decisive one. They've done, both of these teams have shown how resilient they can be in terms of defense, in terms of positioning. Although they are going up against the Glacier here, New York Excel, and so we'll see. Will they be able to figure out a way to stop them? Already, their back line getting pressure. Chonak caught in the corner. Chonak trying to stay alive. Sabiobi is there to try and help him out, but Fleta eventually finds the kill. Too much damage done in the end. Toby with the fancy footwork. Not gonna save him, though. Beko is there. You see him dodging the hooks, but it doesn't matter when you've got a bot running at you. Very interesting they decided not to resurrect Jonek because that is a super smart call. They had won that fight, they'd won the position fight. There was no way that Soul was going to be able to get back in in any sort of proper engagement. So instead of burning out a Valkyrie, one of the most important ultimates of the game, Ark saves it in his pocket. They'd only lost one. New York Excelsior with check marks across the board. You can see the pulse ready now for Saviobi. And on high ground like this as Tracer, decides to give it up, but with those blinks, you can just pop up everywhere, just try and rain down the nade, the bomb, right into the back line. And so instead, it's going to be sold, grouping up together. 25% left here for Excel before they manage to pick up this third map. We'll see what Soul have to say about it, though. Tanks moving together as a duo, forcing New York around and right into the waiting arms of Kuki, who is going to back off, but Kuki's going to have primal rage very soon here. Self-destructs could be absolutely enormous here. A whole hawk starts it off, takes Kuki out of the mix. d maxed by the self-destruct on the other side, but I imagine that resurrection will come off. Art will pop out right away to get Mecho back into this mix. They still have control of the point, does New York. It's a very even foul fight here between both of these teams. So now it's gonna come through the healing and the damage post that also chains out as well between teammates if Ark is using it. But so many kills there for New York Excel, and now it's all on Munchkin here, trying to stay alive as long as possible. Eventually, save Yobi, but connects with face. And it's done, they managed to take the point back over in their favor, and they only need 5%. The pressure is on now for Soul to get in here and try and touch the point quickly, and there it is. Sure enough, we do have Zumba making it in the nick of time to keep his team still in this fight. And back into it, but it's desperation time. They're gonna have to have an enormous play. Sound barrier will start it off, at least give them a little extra staying power on the point. The barrage comes down from Libero. We'll take down two, and no one is there to punish him, so he is still alive. New York has won Oasis. Fantastic play. Now I misspoke there and said New York's all control of the point. The reason they didn't is because their disengage game was on so strong there. They were very patient with their Valkyries. They decided you can come in and that's fine, we'll give this up. They waited for an overextension, they punished it, and then they pushed back onto the point, point took it back. I want to say Ark had a much better game than he did on Horizon Lunar Town. Yeah, it looks like whatever his coach said, you know, coach needs to give himself a pat on the back too because he really made the difference here. Ark, so wise, so savvy. And now we're going to go the distance. It is going to be the fourth map coming up after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Omen by HP the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League.
league that offers opportunity for talented competitors to test and push our assumptions about how the game is meant to be played. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming at you live from Los Angeles, California. Welcome to the Blizzard Arena. Welcome back, everybody. We got the worm in the house as well. So. That's when you. That's what you get when you watch primarily Korean rosters play Overwatch. Hex. It just does things, crazy things to your mind. I think you just got to use all the excess energy that you have during this set. Have you ever done the worm? I have never. No, I have not actually. I'm just gonna throw myself under the bus right there. I, just, I haven't done the worm. Yeah, I, I've fallen, but I've never done the motion afterwards. We've all you know? fallen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised I All right, point big, guys. Point big. It is going to be, and in fact, we do have a sub to change things up. Before we get into this last map, it is worth pointing out that we have Wakid, who will be stepping in for Munchkin. And so, still no pine here for New York XL. Junkertown not necessarily known as a McCree specialist map, so no surprise that we're not seeing Pine there. This makes all the sense in the world. Wakid is going to be their projectile specialist, so he's got a good fare, but they're bringing him in very likely to play a Junkrat. That lets Flat Out go over to the Widowmaker, and we've seen on Junkertown, Widowmaker can decide that map early on. So wide open in the beginning, he's still run it on second, he's still run it on third. It's a very, very good Widowmaker map. Yeah, we've seen so many chances. Wow. Yeah, it, it feels like you really got a chance to shine here if you are the sniper specialist for your team. I mean, just last Linkser yesterday from Houston. I, he definitely went down and he went to town on this map. So definitely a VOD worth checking out, guys. Be sure to visit the website. All of the VODs are there, and that is one that you want to check if you are a Widow player. Linkser really gave you a bit of a demonstration of what's possible. But as far as this map is concerned, we still have Fleta, and he is also one of those top tier performing Widowmaker players. He's been absolutely insane on his Widow, one of the best Widows in all of Overwatch, if not the best, although, you know, I still kind of think Linkser would give him a run for his money on the Widow v. Widow battles. But we are in Junkertown, so it's also very possible that we'll end up seeing some Bastion, although the teams comprised of Korean players don't necessarily love running the Bastion, that's more of a Western strategy that actually these teams have had trouble against anyway. It's not the greatest map for either Seoul or New York Excelsior, but they're playing each other, so perhaps those weaknesses will cancel each other out. Exactly right. Actually curious to see. Because it will be Seoul on the away team starting on the offense with New York Excel on the defense here. No Bastion in sight just yet. But we do perhaps perhaps have the double sniper strategy that we can see here from Seoul. Although Wikid, I mean, he was kind of dancing around on the Hanzo there. I'm curious to see if he's going to lock it in because that is always a lot of fun to watch as well. On the offense here on Junkertown, so many angles for these snipers to set themselves up in, to try and catch opponents off guard. And you can really see it spin out of control for the defense quickly. It's largely because the defense wants to set up in a pretty static position. So you're going to be able to get both snipers on either side. And anyone who takes one step out of line will be absolutely punished for it. And also on the offense, you're going to be running a Orisa yourself. So you're going to pull them out of position anyway and those snipers need to hit the shots and feast on that. Well, what's interesting here is that it is going to be, well, not a shock to say Yobi will be on the Widow here for New York Excel. We're following Fleta's perspective now. A single support on the side of the offense. Jay Hong showing his versatility yet again is going to be on the Roadhog. Ah, uh, there it is. A little bit of information gained. Flat has been spotted out. Now he knows at least he has that to work with. But look at how passively New York Excel are holding this. They, they've hardly taken a fight yet. That, that payload is making so much progress. Well, in all honesty, the defense gets in a little better position here once it rounds the bend. And they've, I think they've seen enough teams get pulled off of that bridge and absolutely abused by snipers. So now they're just going to play a little further back. Let those lines go. A beautiful hook, but Jaehong, no, does not get out with his life. A nice finish there for Mano. Tanks helping each other out. Yes, exactly. Sabio did win the duel versus Wikid as well. A lot of damage lost there for Seoul, and they're going to have to reset and back off. And you can see, New York, you can see how disciplined they are now. Not overextending, not trying to get out there and hunt for the kills. Just hanging out over at the corner. Okay, they're gone. Great. Sit back here on the payload and set up for the fight again. Offense going to be very patient this time. Valkyrie is ready. Say, Byobi about to be able to see through walls with his ultimate. That is the matchup you want to look at. A Valkyrie Mercy can the Widow on the other side of things take them down. So far, these hollow hook combos have been brutal for Jaehong. Once again, he's out of position, launched bodily into the air. Does manage to stay alive. However, he takes a breather and he keeps in that fight. But New York, they're still hanging in here. They've got that Arisa Bearer and another hook. This time onto Zumba, and there's the T-Mac. But most importantly, we've lost Toby in this fight. Toby's out of it. That means this fight's essentially over. Ark has to demonstrate his patience yet again, but no need to even consider popping Valkyrie. New York's defense is looking rock solid right now. 
I think the best way to crack this is going to be trying to get a Valkyrie and get value out of it, but you're so wide open on this map that even a Valkyrie, even the unkillable Moth of Mercy becomes a very good target. You get the Limbro Mines if you're hanging around low on the ground, and if you try and go to the skies to stay safe, that's when Symbio, but you're going to be on his turf, and he's going to love to put a bullet, and you especially have got the wings out. So now, ah, this is a change of angle here coming in from Soul Dynasty. Already, that's going to be a bit of a shift. Libero looking perhaps for an angle here to hide himself to use the Riptire. And sure enough, he's going to get that rolling immediately. Hunting for the target behind the shield. Not going to find anything, actually. Hardly anything at all. And Toby is still in this fight. Valve still in use. He wanted the Mercy with that tire, but he was able to stay out of the mix there. It comes an opposing tire on the other side of things as Toby starts using his resurrection. Brings people back to life. Yonic down as well. The defense in a very difficult position right now. And they are going to be mopped up as the card continues to push forward. But Save Yobi comes back strong, takes down his counterpart, takes down Jayhong. And the reinforcements from say Yobi uh, died early in that last fight, comes back, brings it back for New York. You gotta give it to Mono as well. That target acquisition from him, figured out that Wikid was stuck in that side room, cut off from his healers, went in there, got the kill on Wikid. And as soon as Wikid is out of it, that is so much damage that Solar lacking. And so New York now able to take the fight to him. They have really. Well, there's only 40 seconds left on the clock. One more time, one more time around the bend for New York to hold on first on Junkertown, which is a rarity in the Overwatch League. That is huge right away. That so much splash damage now out of the mix forces out an early resurrection. Pressure will begin to mount with Keen. However, will eliminate the rip tire here for Libero. Libero still looking for the angle though. He's gonna be wrapping around, does get spotted in, but it doesn't miss the shot. Libero is done, he's out of the fight. This is going to have to bring Ark into it as well. He will be able to pop the wings fast enough to get the res off on Libero. That is so important. Jonak point blank with the volley, but no kill for him. Ark, both res is used now. This is the turning point. Libero finds the key kill on Fleta, but Toby's there with the res, and the fight will continue. That was a gutsy attempt at a kill there, but now both Valkyries have been popped. It means that next deaths will be permanent. New York is still six men up, but some of them are on their way back to the point. We will have just an all-out brawl in this next fight. The hook does not connect Johnny on the spot with the defense matrix is Zumba he keeps his team alive and very likely on the path to first point what fantastic peel there as soon as Fleta is pressured as soon as he's in trouble boom you got three guys from Seoul there to try and save the day and save him and sure enough they do keeping their star alive but that does not leave a whole lot of time here for Seoul Dynasty to work with two minutes to push through to the second point. It's a long map, that door just opens now, and because of where they won that fight, it's gonna allow the defense to probably set up in the position that they want. This is a cheeky play, though, as Wakid is around the bend. He's waiting for information from his team to tell them if they're set up and they're pumped up. He wants to rip that tire up the stairs. Here it goes. Yeah, over the high ground and right down into the wind, and never mind, Sabiobi, you tried to get clever there. He's not having any of it. Fleta will be able to trade the kill back, but Sabiobi continues to reign supreme, and this is just a battle of the snipers. Fleta and Sabiobi just keep getting kill after kill. It was a tricky play there, but because Wakid took the angle he did to try to get the tire up over the top, it meant there was no retreat. Once he's in that doorway, there's no way he's getting out of that alive. That's a, most of their damage out of the fight. Defense in a great position now. That's exactly where you want to set up on Junker Town as we fall below 90 seconds. When you have that Widow and she can hide behind the barrier like this, it is so difficult. And it's so difficult, in fact, that Fleta has given up. He's already swapped off the Widow to the Genji. He's not going to be able to try and deal with this. Instead, he's going to try and look for the flank. No need to go for the 1v1 fight. When you've got Save Double, you can just hit headshots at will. And an Orisa Barrier will just ruin your day as a Widow, so there's no point to it. They've switched off the tank anyway, so they're going to move on to a Winston, a more dive composition here. Meanwhile, two key components of the dive are out of it already. Time to reset. Mercy barely escapes with their life. I'm here. With about 45 seconds, Semler, this is very likely the last good push Soul's gonna have, but they do have both support ultimates. New York can match them. They can, but we've been in this situation before. Soul, they only have 30 seconds. Oh, well, nope, Soul tied up, and we're going to. I mean, it is actually unbelievable. It's as if the clock doesn't matter for Soul, they will perform. So now it's on New York. They have to find a way to destabilize this machine. And so Mecco, rotating to the high ground, he's got his whole hog, and already. We will have Cookie just leaping into the fray, getting that barrier down, really trying to split up New York. 
a wonderful bait there to have the Widow up there. That is the prime target for that dive composition. But they had Mecho lurking around with the whole hog on the other side of things. Kobe has popped his valve. Kuki back for this fight. Ark has popped valve as well. These deaths will be resurrected, throwing everything and the kitchen sink as it is sold. Yes, both teams, in fact, none of the support cards in play. The we key, though, that could be the turning moment. The supercharger is down as well as Mano, but Libero is there to remove the back line. Now the staying power no longer present for Soul Dynasty. It is going to be on the tanks to try and stay alive and keep their hopes in it. But Mecco point blank gets the d -back. looking for the follow-up. Tough target to hit this diva. The mini diva, you know, she's quick. She's fleet of foot. He's doing a great job of stalling it out. That was diva on the point, but Neko's got a, or Mecco rather has another whole hog. He dies halfway through it. Say Biobi looking for a miracle as well. Can Soul pull this all the way back? It's unbelievable if they can. Still have Fleta in the mix. He's got the Dragon Blade as well. So if you try and one in here willy-nilly, he can commit that to this fight to guarantee the second point. Mono will get pushed into the corner. Ark having to back off, give ground, and it does look like Soul. They have the opportunity here to connect and get to the second point, push this to a third. Mecco will get picked as well, and they are just running in one after another. Finally, Jonak decides enough is enough. I have to get the trance out there. He will be invulnerable during the duration, and that could be the turning point. Tanks completely out of it as Save Yobi comes in, and both of the tanks for Soul are out. That means no great stalling option out of the point. Flatta, though, trying to bring it back, but he cannot deflect the taser of Winston. That is where the payload will end. New York's win condition gets a second point at Junkertown and claim your spot as the best team in the Overwatch League. That is what is at stake. You're right, Hex. But what a remarkable play from Fleta. Staying alive forever. I mean, it, yeah, this uh, this is really so back and forth. It's so tough to call. There's so much going on at every moment here that really the analysts, you know, they'll have a few key replays, I'm sure, to try and highlight some of the turning moments here. But getting into it now, 20 seconds until it will be New York on the offense trying to push through. And I'm curious to see if they're going to have you know, that Bastion in play, if they want to get the pirate ship going, really try. New York's really interesting, and I called out on the first map that it's a gutsy and courageous team. Ark switched off of the Mercy to go on to Lucio, just to get back to the point quicker. They went all in on that fight. Do, if they lose that fight, they're essentially giving up Valkyrie advantage for the next fight. So those are choices that can snowball, but they believe in themselves, they believe in their ability to close out fights, even on off heroes like that. This New York team, man, do they have some courage. They're showing that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. Execute and that they deserve to be called the best team. as well. Optimizing and so, strategy. it is a joy to watch. Save Yobi has really been standing out as well. I mean, as far as this whole matchup is concerned, he has been sitting consistently at the top of the Attackers leaderboard for New York. Both DPS for New York have had standout moments, that's for sure. Well, a lot of this is always going to go down to the Widow battle, of course. Flat is going to find himself in position to try to pick off the other Widow on the other side of things, which generally would be Save Yobi. New York is going to run a lot of different things. It'd be very strange if they run a Hanzo without a Widow. So I think we're still seeing them take their final form here. Now countdown has begun, and we're going to see can Soul withstand the offense of New York, Excel. And already we have the Bastion in play here. Jonak will be running it. The Hail of Bullets will be coming in. Exactly, he's going to just start whittling down those shields, not even whittling, melting them. In a span of seconds, this is going to force Soul Dynasty to give ground, have to back up. This is great scouting. Soul's showed some difficulties against this composition before. And if you can get this rolling, then it's so much pressure onto the defense. Those shields non-existent. A hoink out of there. Yoinks the Orisa, not able to finish that off, but they are just on roller skates being pushed back. And Jonak, very clever, just backs off as soon as he realizes that perhaps he could get caught in a crossfire. There is the key frag, though. Save Yoli, takes down Fleta, and that can main all the difference. Libero, however, will get traded by Zumba. They lose a little bit of damage, but Fleta with the res as well. Jonak, can he make the difference? No, hooked into oblivion. And Soul Dynasty, they managed to grind the push to a halt. Not quite over yet, still doing a little bit of push here. Save Yobi took down another target there. Meanwhile, Ark falling means it is time to retreat, regroup, and get back into the mix. Ark at 95%, a slight advantage over Toby. Showing that they're capable of dealing with this. This is why 
As far as the Bastion is concerned, you don't see it quite as often anymore. Soul showing that they are quite capable of dealing with this strategy. They're gonna stay on the Bastion too. Oftentimes you get stopped once, it's very hard to reestablish, but the, the positioning of the cart will allow them to get back on the point. They're just gonna take the angle over here. Say Biobi gonna be looking to pop some domes as he sees through walls now. Yeah, exactly. In for red, he'll be able to spawn out his counterpart, Fleta, and that would be a key fight to win right now. Fleta, of course, knows exactly what's going on, and so you see Soul all hiding behind walls in the houses. Mecco at risk here, dropping dangerously low. He will be able to take a breather just in time to stay alive. Zumba, though, caught in the open now, trying to hide. Not gonna happen, and we're getting kills traded. They forced out Valkyrie already from Toby, though, and the moment that that Valkyrie is done with Arc will pop his. There comes Arc's Valkyrie that will bring them back up to full strength should they need it. Libero died in a very strange spot, as did say Biobi, so that means Arc out of position gets caught out by Fleta in the resurrection meta. It is not if you die, it is where you die. Arc trying to get over there, put himself into harm's way. Fleta with the punish. Very key point that you just made there, Hex. You'll be trying to get clever, trying to find an angle, but he just died out in the middle of nowhere. Not gonna make your job easier for your mercy. And man, look at that, the, na the nade damage dealt. Ark is gonna be happy because it means that he obviously charges his ultimate faster, but still. Well, both support ultimates down for the side of New York. Not much to work with for the side of Soul either. Maybe a self-destruct can stall it out. We're nearing only one minute left. So the final push most likely, and already Jay Hung, another big hook. I'll buy another time, another 10 seconds off this clock. A little bit longer as well as Mono will have to run back in, and this is where the pressure will begin somehow. They're starting to fall apart here. Jonak out in the open. Gives Fleta the chance to get the headshot, and Koki is there as well. One after another, they fall. These are valuable seconds that New York Excel cannot afford to give up right now. And that's how the dominoes fall. You lose your main tank. That means the shield is down. That means that sight lines are wide open for the opposing sniper. Jonak gets punished for it by Fleta. You don't want to make Fleta make a shot because generally he will. This is unbelievable. And look how passively Fleta is playing all the way back. Choke point on the wall, not willing to give any targets for Save Yobi to work with here. Maybe a game ending tire here up over the top, looking for a little juke move right there. Just stalling it out, they have to play very passively. Nice shot there, keeps New York in this. Arc cast Valkyrie up as well. And Fleta, now that the uh, infrared is worn off, it's gonna be out in the open again, looking for these shots. Nice hook to set things up, not quite finding the kill though. Mecco, somehow he will die eventually. The damage is there. Ark will bring him back to life though, and we have the bouts in play, but that overtime wick is burning, and New York not able to get on the point in time. So they keep their hopes alive. We're tied up two to two, and sure enough, Hex, it had to go down this way. It had to happen this way that we go to five maps. I agree on that first point. It didn't have to happen with New York consistently missing objective points on here. Yes, there's positioning involved, but sack it onto the cart, sacrifice your life, get there, keep the clock going. That is at least three times in this set that they didn't go all in on the point, had people alive, a little bit rough there. New York, for all the good things they have done, they have made some mistakes. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network.
Welcome back from the break, everybody. This is it, the defining moment for both of these teams. Who is going to stay top dog in the group and who is going to take over? Because, you know, New York Excel, they're nipping at Seoul's heels right now. A lot of great play on both sides. Seoul's mascot is a tiger. They've been the cardiac cats here so far. Just when you think they're out of it, they come back into it and stay alive. A lot of great team coordination. New York's some mistakes, but I think the bright side of that is they've been winning with, with, with those mistakes, and those are very correctable. We do see a roster substitution. Wakid is out to the Junkrat Specialist, now out of it. Bunny will come back in as we are going to Li Zhang Tower. Generally don't run a whole lot of Junkrat there. Maybe a little more Tracer on the ground. It is a very Tracer-friendly map, so that is the substitution. No subs on the side of the New York Excelsior. Yes, if you're getting your hopes up, you know, you're thinking, oh, it's Control, maybe we'll see Pine. No, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, there are a few Pine fans here, but not gonna happen today. Pine looks like he will not get called in to wear the jersey and play for his team. He is certainly watching from the dugout, though, and, well, that's gonna be an interesting conversation with him at some point, wondering what he thinks about what his team is doing now. It's all down to a best of three here on Li Zhang Tower. We thought it was going to five. We are hoping it was going to five. We get it right here. Could not get any better than this. A lot of this comes down to Tracer v. Tracer. In some of these matchups, and my money would be on Seibyobi, SBB, one of the best Tracers on the planet, one of the best anti-Tracers on the planet. If the Tracer's harassing your back line, he will take a step back and put that Tracer in check, find his moments, hit his pulse bombs. We'll see which map we start out here. Three stages on Li Zhang Tower. They all play a little bit differently, so we can see a whole lot of different heroes. A whole variety, and that is why Li Zhang, I mean, I know it's one of your favorite maps, hands down. Yep. You do actually get to see all the variety of strats. You can see how deep you can run with your hero pool. And so you see, you know, Soul feel a little bit more like a team with these specialists, you know, that they're subbing in, saying, right, okay, it's this map, this is the strategy, good. We got a guy who can shine in that kind of moment. But New York itself, you, you cannot help but be impressed by how deep the hero pool runs for this team. They aren't making subs, and yet they're still changing it up constantly. Yeah, it's definitely just a different style. New York knows when to go all in, when to pull back, and they've made a lot of really gutsy decisions that have paid off. They made some small mistakes that have really cost them, but going out here, we will see a far up from the side of the New York Excelsior. It means they probably want to rotate onto the point of Night Market very quickly. You would like to get your far behind the Night Market and start throwing rockets through these windows. That's exactly the position they'll take. Uh, not wasting any time whatsoever, whereas Fleta with the Soldier, his scan can kind of hang back, and exactly, just kind of plink shots in there. Damage boosted from Toby as well, he'll be pleased about that. But the point about to unlock, and it's going to come down to who commits first in New York Excel. They're kind of dancing around on the edge. Soul Dynasty did not waste any time whatsoever. They go leaping in, and Mato just takes a whole hail of bullets straight to the face. Mecco caught out in the open, shouldn't be long for this world either. With Toby out of the fight, this is a fight that on paper New York should win. However, Jay Hong and Fleta combine to take down two and bring it all the way back. And with that big presence on the point now out of it, Bimbara and Mercy cannot have the same impact because they can just get walked in on. They will go off of the edge. Oh, 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 oh. You know, uh, rocket v rocket, doesn't matter if it's a Helix or a Ferris rocket. That was a bit too oh, close for comfort there. That was a bit too close for comfort. Would have been sick to see. Yeah, no surprise here. They switch off the Farah immediately because now without control of the point, it's almost impossible to get her out here, especially with the aim of Fleta on the ground. to be plunking away at it. Libero on a Genji instead. Now we've seen him excel with the Genji play throughout this series. So definitely no slouch. And sure enough, Jayhawk getting clever, getting cheeky with the volleys. That reflex, always a risk, always a danger. This, however, is going to really make the difference. Fleta just light him up right now with the attack visor. He only gets the one kill on Libero. But he forces them to drop their heads, and while well, Sabiobi takes the Helix Rockets to the face. Valk's out on both sides, but Ark gets himself in a very odd position, even though his tank saved his life against that technical visor again. One of those is gonna hit one of these days, and it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. Soul holding on here at Night Market, 50% to zero, and a lot of alts committed on both sides from that last fight. All over the place, even while we have uh, the map there. Funny, just taking a little bit of a fight here. Yeah, sure enough, Sabiobi on the flank. Looking to perhaps punish money. And there it is, self-destruct. Trying to get some kind of uh, shift going on in the defense here. Trying to force them out in the open. Perhaps the transcendence is there from Jayhawk. Keep his teammates alive. And Ark under pressure eventually gets hunted down by Bunny. Mecco will trade and take down Zuma, but that's not quite the same weight. 
Very interesting kill on Earth there. He went for the stake, but he forced Art into a bad situation. Meanwhile, though, Jonak comes to life, says, I will do it by myself. He takes down a couple. New York has won this fight against all odds and will take control here. <laughs> Not only that, you got the one-man killing machine. Jonak over there in the halls, but Libero is just chilling out on the point. I've got Dragon Blade. If anybody challenges me, I can chop him into pieces. Everything is fine for New York now. They get to reset, and they've held on to a few key ultimates, whereas Soul right now have a long way to go. Although Fleta will be getting attacked by the fairly soon. Dragon Blade, the next ult that comes off the board. He's got supports in his sight. Supports are down. He combines with his tank. That fight is over. Find the time. Doesn't even matter that he died. He got rid of a few there, and so Soul, once again, gotta get staggered. They're gonna stagger their ultimates as well. Mono's dream right now is that they try that same angle. They all try to come into the hallway because there's nothing like an angry gorilla in a hallway to knock them back and at least buy a little bit of time. Sebiobi, I thought he might pull the trigger there. Blink past the 76, does not go for it, playing a little more conservative. He's doing a good job whittling them down though. Does get spotted out. This is the crazy fight. You gotta think a thousand words per minute here and a thousand thoughts as well. Sebiobi trying to keep on top of Bunny, but he is such a slippery target. Still has his pulse bomb as well. This is some real patience coming out of Savioli considering how quickly he generates those ults. Toby preemptively Valkyrie that fight and is unable to find a resurrection target. They didn't even kill anyone. That is one of the counters to Valka. You just waited out, don't kill anyone. Now Ark has his own. They might not even need it. Still in control of the point 71 and counting up. Now Ark's Valkyrie will come up. He'll bring Mono back to life. They have lost Mecho though. Still on the hunt on the ground. Jonak kills two again. Unbelievable. Fleta does get the res in time. Is there to stop Saviobi and Ark will get the res on Jonak. So the terror continues along. As I say that, Zamba finally manages to end him. And so Mano trying to buy a little bit of time here. Touches the point. No pull down for the jump pack. Chucked off the side like a piece of garbage. <laughs> hey, don't litter. Don't teach people how to litter. Don't teach people how to litter, especially, you know, 600 pound monkeys. Wherever he lands, it ain't going to be pretty. They flipped it back into control, 94% in counting up. It means New York should have one more fight. If they have to carve their way into an entry, they will do so. They've got Dragon Blade ready. Ark has switched off Mercy on Lucio instead. All right, here goes the defining moment. Maximum pressure on Jonak. Ark just knocked Toby off the side. A little Lucio, Lucio duel, and they have most of the f kills in this fight early on. However, now Soul has stabilized. Small advantage for New York. This fight will win the stage. The focus on Kuki, he is still here, and he will be able to stay alive as well, but the point is takes back over in New York Excelsior's favor. They still have the edge here. As far as the ults are concerned, Mono will have his Primal Rage continue buying time. He just needs to stay alive, and the overtime wick is burning. Soul not going to make that mistake, though. Toby eventually gets snuffed. And this is at the moment that New York are waiting for. They pick up the first map, give themselves the advantage here in the deciding map of this series. Remember that map, because it is not often you will see Soul get out-supported. But Jonak and Ark played a better game overall than their counterparts on the other side. Toby got surprised tinnitus'd. Ark comes around the bend, hits him with that boob, he goes off. That is all your area of effect healing now out of it. You can't fight on the point in that situation. And Jonak, I don't know what more to say about this guy. He's throwing shapes. I don't know if those are orbs or shurikens, but he is absolutely murdering anyone who gets near him while still putting out crazy healing. I mean, yes, okay, if you're looking at some of the stats here, Toby, 6,000 in healing, 400 in damage. Where you go over to Jonak, it's like 3.5K heals, 3.7K damage. You might as well have a third DPS player on your team who is still healing your teammates as well. It's such a cool style. They play aggressive. They just go with the raw damage output. Rarely do they even run a Lucio unless it is dire times, and the Ark is is capable of that as well. We will have the battle here. This is the most likely map that you will see far be far on. On Leash Octari. Both teams do a Jodak! Don't stand still! But I'll definitely note if you got bunnies lobbing bombs all over the place. But Jonak, that is a big kill to take down Jay Hong early on here. And again, New York Excel will start with the point under their control. When you're running these compositions and mirrors against each other, if you kill the Mercy on the other team, you have killed the Farah on the other team by proxy. There is almost no way that Farah can exist without the Mercy hanging on as well. And you'll see that is exactly what happened there. Holding on to control is New York. 
high ground fight up in the skies, and this, there will be a trade. It looks like Jonak has been removed, and he's been booped into oblivion, and that is a big difference. No res possible to get him back into this, and so things are about to get dicey here for New York, unless they can come with some big kills. Mako, so close to the self-destruct, not quite gonna get it, though. If Yobi still on the point messing around, a Lucio being healed is a target that you're just not gonna kill as a Tracer in general. Nice little bump there. Ark does fall during this fight. They're just trying to stay in here and tap dance around to get as much percentage as humanly possible. Sam Yobi will take your Winston with him. Might not have to give this up, but that barrage takes down both tanks. Sam Yobi gonna try to miracle this. They transcend. They keep contesting it though. There's the pulse bomb right in the middle of all of them. We'll be able to remove that barrier even faster now. And so those targets gonna get a bit vulnerable, but Sam Yobi, despite everything, not able to contest that long. And they will eventually get that, po that point taking for themselves here, Soul. Both Valkyries in action now, and Libera will be the first to be respawned. As he was taken down early, they will continue to push. New York has etched out an edge here yet again. Excuse my English there, but it's six to four. Mono goes into man mode, takes down three. Oh, and that's big because Jehan wasn't able to get in there to get the reses or anything either. He gets caught in the open, and just like that, a very quick retake here on the point for New York Excelsior. They're up to 60%. Soul only got 24 out of that engagement. That's not quite enough here for Soul. They're gonna have to make something happen here in this next fight. And as far as ults are concerned, they've got Zuma with the self-destruct. That's it. That's brutal. Ark is going to be at 60% of his Valkyrie. Toby just nearing 5% now. And these fights on Legion can be so long and drawn out that this could be the final fight. New York is a chance to win this. Oh, buddy, John X. World that hurt, but he's got great support. His team to the rescue! Keep him alive, he barely hangs in there. And well, they are forcing the back New York Kings now. They are taking the fight to Seoul. They know they're on the break. All of these kills making a massive difference, 90%. And now this is where you get desperate if you're Seoul. You have to get in here, you have to contest the point. You've got 4% left, just a couple of seconds. Kuki, can you get through the window? All right, they have Bunny on point, so at least buy a little bit more time here. He went a little early, though. He was trying to hide out, but they had spotted him, so that's why he jumped on the point right away. Toby's gonna resurrect Fleta immediately. Ark's still holding on to his Valkyrie. This is an uphill fight for Soul. The focus, the target calling here. Everything is impeccable for New York Excel. No resurrect possible, especially not when you're dead. And New York, they might well have done it. They might have dethroned the Kings, declawed the Cats, and they are the new Kings of Overwatch League. New York Excel, they have Says it all. A team whose name means ever upward. Now nowhere more to go as they sit atop the Overwatch League. That series, yeah, we have been spoiled these past couple days, haven't we, Hex? I mean, that series, the ones from yesterday, all going to overtime in the fifth map on Lee Jang's decider. And Lee Jang is always such a joy to watch. You can see everything there. You know the scariest part about that is New York didn't play perfect. There is very much they could improve on, and they still beat what everyone predicted would be the best team in the league. Yeah, I mean, all of these guys, obviously. Good friends, the competitors, when you're in the server, it doesn't matter, you're out to kill, right? But you get out of the server, you know, hugs, handshakes, lots of respect here between these players. But they are both vying for that top spot in the league, and now New York Excel have made a statement. They have made it very clear that they are capable, despite errors on their side as well. They had, they did not have a perfect game as well. So a lot of room for improvement here. Just goes to show the level that we have here at Overwatch League. And so now, ah, fantastic. Just been told we have an interview with Art waiting for you on the floor. Thank you so much, guys. Ark from the New York Excelsiors is now joining me. Give it up. Ark, what a game, taking it all the way to map number five. You're the first team to defeat the Seoul Dynasty. What did you guys do right, which the other teams didn't manage to do? Uh, we knew that uh, their DPSs are really good, so we just tried to shut them down. And yeah, I think this is the result. Well, it worked out just fine for you guys. Now, of course, I have to ask it. Defeating the Seoul Dynasty, one of your old rivals, does that make you the best team in this league now? Of course. <laughs> of course, there you have it. Thank you so much, Art. Thank you for this beautiful performance on the stage. Thank you for a beautiful Overwatch. We're now heading to the desk to break down the game.
What a match that just was. Put your hands together one more time for both these teams. Seoul Dynasty and the New York Excel putting on the best show we have seen so far during the regular season. Welcome back for the post-game report. Chris Puckett joined by Sideshow and reinforced one more time. And guys, we just saw New York hand more map losses to Seoul Dynasty than Seoul had in their first five matches coming into this one. Let's go back to game number three. And this is where we are a little bit worried. There was no pine in the mix, but the coaches were in New York shown us they had a game plan and they executed it. Oh, they had a fantastic game plan. They, they have crafted a composition and a strategy that works so well against Seoul Dynasty. You can't quite see it here because this is when Mano had switched over to the Winston, but they were running this road, they were running their main tank on Roadhog with the Diva, and then they have Libero up in the air. And the combination of these two factors means that Fledder has to focus on Libero because he's up in the skies. You can see this composition now on the top right hand side of your screen. And it means that the Roadhog and Diva can just wreck Kuki and Zunba. They were focusing the tank so hard for Soul Dynasty, it was unreal. Yes, and of course, I think that puts too much pressure onto Fleta to perform in this Soul Dynasty squad. Because when you have someone like Kuki who plays back, he's not going to be the one making the plays necessarily. He's going to be the one protecting Fleta. Uh, on now on Oasis, we saw him play the Pharah, of course. So Fleta pretty much has to win the Pharah duel versus the Libero in the sky. Otherwise, it's lights out for Soul Dynasty. So because they shut down Kuki so well, and they knew going into the matchup that Kuki was going to be the main tank, which Soul Dynasty put so much pressure on, they countered him flawlessly. That first control, back and forth, back and forth, but it's New York walking away with the win. Now they're on match point. We go to Junkertown in New York. Well, they stopped Soul short of the second point. We looked at each other on the analyst desk and we said, wow, New York just won this game. Incredible stop. But Seoul never going away. A ridiculous performance on their own defensive stand. Absolutely, and we know that Seoul are fantastic at the defenses on the third point, but we've not seen something like this on the first. And I think the key difference in compositions here, you can see it at the top, is that, uh, or you actually can't from this point of view because this is when Seoul were attacking, sorry. But in general, they were running Jaehong mostly on the Roadhog. Now you can see it. They were running this solo heal, Toby Mercy, and they had three tanks plus all the damage that they needed. And it was so difficult for New York Excel to be able to crack through this. They got stalled out again and again and again. Johnny, what did you think of putting Ryuji Hong on a Roadhog and then Wiki on the Junkrat here for Junkertown? Well, it works out, right? If they just play with discipline here, they're not going to take that much damage. Ryuji Hong can keep himself alive, of course, on the Roadhog. So overall, I think it worked out really well because they didn't have so much incoming damage. They played around the corners. They got the picks with the Orisa and the Roto combo. Flera won the Wiro duel quite often. So the key things worked out for Soul Dynasty flawlessly. And they played with patience, didn't get picked unnecessarily. So that was the typical Soul Dynasty, I would say, we usually see. I felt like this was watching Ali versus Frazier. Ali with the jabs at Sabi Obi on the Tracer, and he finally wore down Frazier in the final game. Let's go into the action as we went into Li Zhang Tower. Sabi Obi popping off, but it was his tank so clutch. This is Mono opening up with a pick on Toby. Unfortunately, Soul was still able to win this fight without their mercy. Yes, they were, but this composition again came out from New York XL, where they're focusing down the tanks. The difference in tank kills on Li Zhang was absolutely massive. NYXL's tanks had 21 kills over the course of the map. Soul's tanks only had nine. They were focusing on setting up Fletter, but Cookie and Zumba again were just getting destroyed. The Zenyatta gives the Discord, and Soul are playing with a Lucio for this stage. They don't have the ability to answer that kind of composition. Yes, again, it comes down to Fletter so much in these control maps that he has to make the pace. Now they swap, they flex the uh, sub in uh, Bunny, of course, on the Tracer, but he doesn't ne necessarily didn't show up as we usually see these substitutions for Soul Dynasty. So I, I was a bit disappointed. The and game plan was probably to get Bunny to put pressure on Ark uh, and uh, Jonak, of course, so the support ultimates on the New York side aren't as uncontested. I, I think Jonak won that one. <laughs> yes, exactly. So th the game plan didn't work out in the control maps, and I think moving forward, we need to maybe see them swapping off Kuki onto Miro. So there's more players in this Soul Dynasty squad that can make the win happen, turn up and get those individual plays happening. They made so few substitutions as compared to their previous matches, but let's talk about the reason that New York walked away with the victory today. Last time around, we didn't see Pine for a game five, and a lot of people took to Twitter, oh, if you put Pine in, you're gonna win it. Today, New York goes back with the same roster. They don't put Pine in, and they're able to walk away with the victory. How do they get it done today compared to yesterday against Philly? 
Well, I think that Saibiolbi and Mono was the ones who turned up for this New York Excelsior squad. I think that Mono's aggression was so superb. I mean, he was up in, this, uh, in the face of Soul Dynasty all the time. And we could see that Saibiolbi was getting the flanks and winning the Tracer Duels. Uh, yes, of, of course, yesterday we saw that Saibiolbi was fighting Carpe. And Carpe, he's a pretty good Tracer. But Saibiolbi in this fight, in this matchup, he was able to win the Tracer Duel pretty consistently, pretty much all the time versus Bunny or Munchkin. Yeah, but and I think that having such an aggressive composition from Philadelphia Fusion perhaps should have indicated to Soul that they need Miro in the lineup to provide that kind of aggression and knock NYXL off their game. But they both tried to play a, more, a slower style, and actually it was NYXL controlling the tempo of this match the whole way through. Well, we have two more matches to get to, and we know both Seoul and New York are going to go back and watch these VODs. And one thing they'll notice in both of their notebooks, you're going to see one name over and over again. It's our player of the match, sponsored by Omen by HP. Sabi Olby going off on the Tracer is our player of the match, and it all started on map one, Eichenwald. Yes, and this time he shut down Munchkin on the Tracer, of course. And this player, I mean, he's amazing. Okay, Pocket. Several times you've questioned me when I said that Saibiolbi <laughs> is the best Tracer in the world. But after this series, I'm going to go ahead and crown him as the best Tracer in the world. He is in such, the world. He's such a big game player. That's what I love about Saibiolbi. Is that, okay, so far throughout the season, we haven't seen this kind of performance from him. But historically, he turns up when required. And he can play the Widowmaker to a ridiculous degree. He was getting the better end of Flare in yes. a number of these fights. He got the better end of their Tracers every single time. And when they ran the quad tank, he was annihilating people on Roadhog. This guy is a monster. Now I want you to look at the final blows here. 42 final blows come in for Sabi Olby. And stats, can you be in my ear one more time? The opponents, 19? Yeah, it's, it's this one here, KD versus opposing DPS. That means that when Sabi Obi was going 1v1 against the other guy that was supposed to kind of be in his role, he won 36 out of uh, the, the total matchups and they only won 19. That is unbelievable. This guy was on fire and creating so much space for New York. Ridiculous stuff all the way through that series. New York now joins both Seoul and London at 5-1 in our overall standings. But coming up next, in our second match of the day, we're going to see the team that beat New York yesterday. It's the Philadelphia Fusion going up against the Shanghai Dragons for match number two. We'll be right back. to you by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League, T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network, and by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. 